hello good afternoon everyone <clears throat> thanks for joining uh dr lawrence here uh, african beauty i'm great and uh, how are you doing <clears throat> if you share it for us if you've just joined uh just share it for us kwame prince yeah from Gansey. yeah i hope you agree you're doing very well uh this is uh dr lawrence from england in Maystone, Maystone in England, uh, Kent. Hello, Tessie. I hope you're doing all right. Hi, yeah. If you've just joined, send your like, send your comment, share it for us. And uh, obviously, earlier on uh, this morning, those who joined me, you would have seen that uh, we were talking about we we're discussing almost everything, and we got some people come on live to ask certain questions. I did say that I was going to come on earlier today around about uh, 1 p.m. or so, but yeah, I think it was 12 o'clock or 1 p.m. But I had to do something, so I, I've joined, I've come on here a bit late. And as the saying goes, it's better late than never. It's better late than never. Hello, Jasby. Hello, I hope you're all doing great. And you're all having a wonderful uh, Saturday afternoon. Okay, okay, yeah. Hello, Awala Raf Raf Rafati. Yeah, Frederick, I see you. Uh, Arafati, I see you. I hope you're doing great. I hope you're doing great. Uh, Krobia Asante Kotoko, good evening. Yeah, I hope you are doing well. Nanama, thanks for following. Nadel, hello. Mol or Molly, I hope you're doing great. Paco Senior, I hope you are doing well. Uh, Edward Hughes, Dazi, Nana Kwame Tre, I'm going to be mentioning as many people as I can. Uh, Queen Abina, I hope you're doing great. Duke uh, Rafusa Nadel, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, hi, my first time, Sunshine YG. Thanks again for joining and hopefully you're going to follow uh, and you are not going to regret. What we're going to be talking about today is uh, basically, normally I do get a lot of people, what we talk about this page, if you've just joined or you've just followed this page, is we talk about anything about travel. We talk about either skilled worker visa or sponsorship visa to UK and some other countries if you've got the information. We also do talk about general life, lifestyle in the UK if you are planning to relocate or travel to the UK. And uh, also support if you are a student and you are also looking for, uh, what do you call it, some scholarships or fully funded or schools and you need a bit of uh information or you need a bit of guidance on what to be able to do on how to be able to apply it we come on this page and we share the information so what i'm going to be uh targeting or talking about uh this afternoon uh whilst i'm on here is normally i do get in the morning i couldn't ask my question so hopefully you'll be able to come and ask your question what i'm going to be talking about uh now is uh people who are looking to a lot of people say they apply for a lot of skilled worker visas they apply for a lot of jotai in thailand i hope you're doing well i hope you're doing good nancy gonna do 72 i hope you're doing good a lot of people said if applied for skilled worker visa jobs to the uk uh or maybe they are already in the uk and they are looking to switch and they apply for jobs but sometimes they find it very difficult to be able to land an interview yeah uh, they are finding it difficult to be able to land an interview if you join for another student yeah you can stay on this link we're not going to be talking about everything about students we talk about anything from travel yeah working in the UK coming uh, what you call it even if you want to travel as a visitor we talk about it well websites that you need to go to go and research so you understand the process to apply for a visa uh, what you call it so we give you the information you go to the website then you do a bit of background search and you get the information guys power tap power tap for us we've got 92 people if everybody is sending their likes we will be able to hit the numbers so as i was saying what i'm going to be talking about this afternoon is basically going to specialize on a lot of people say that when they apply for work especially or maybe when they see a job which qualifies them to be able to get a sponsorship or to get a skilled worker visa to come to the uk they apply for the job they apply for these jobs but unfortunately they are unable to get that particular interview or for people who are already in the uk 
they apply for the loads and loads of jobs, but they are unable to land that particular interview. So we are going to be talking about how to be able to write a proper CV, a CV that meets the UK standard and what information that needs to go into that CV writing. And uh, this CV, obviously, as well as it meets the UK standard, I believe that if you are looking to apply for job anywhere, whether it's in your home country, whether you're in Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, whether you know, in South Africa, whether in any other part of the world, you will be able to tailor this particular CV uh, if you are able to stay on and listen and obviously apply it. It will be able to help you to be able to go a long way. So whether you're applying for a skilled worker visa or whether you're applying for job, you're already in the UK or outside the UK, wherever you need it, that is going to go a long way to help you to be able to land that particular dream job. So I'm waiting for a lot of people to join on here. Then we can dive straight into uh, what you call it, what we're going to be discussing. So before uh, we dive straight into it, I've seen a lot of people have got questions. Somebody says, can I, Golden Flower 30, say, can I apply for a sponsorship visa from Turkey to go to London? Yeah, if you meet the requirements, then definitely yes. Yeah, and also just be make sure that if you are not originally from Turkey and you are applying from Turkey, just make sure that you've got uh, the right permission or the right permit in Turkey before you apply. Because if you are living in Turkey illegally, then that can be tricky for you. Uh, Dominic Ousu, yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, if you've just joined the page, thanks very much for joining. Thanks very much for joining. Uh, somebody said Edward Hughes does he? I got here in the UK last Monday and my BRP is not ready yet. Home I'm not hope I'm gonna get a job. Your BRP, yeah. Did you have have you got any form of uh what you call it documentation to say that you've submitted if you've got like a kind of a reference letter uh that you, your BRP obviously you are still waiting for it. Or normally you can have uh, a share code. You can request for a share code from the UK Home Office, a share code. So that share code, if you are, let's say you get any uh, interview, when you go for the interview, you can present the share code uh, that demonstrates your right to work in the UK. So obviously, if you've got a skilled worker visa, but just that you haven't received your biometric resident permit card, your BRP, then obviously that shouldn't be a problem at all. They will be able to check, your employer will be able to check and make sure that obviously, or the home office, and make sure that you've got uh, the right permit to be able to work in the UK, to be able to do that. Okay, let's go through the questions. Uh, in the morning, I couldn't ask my question. So yeah, you can ask your question now. If you couldn't ask your question, Lucifer. Yeah, you can ask your question. Krobi uh, Asantikotoko, please have to ask a question. Ask your question below. Or do you want to come up here and ask your question? Let's see. Do, 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 do. If we can connect with him. Yeah, somebody has sent a request. I'm trying to bring him up so that he can ask. We finish asking a question, then we delve straight into uh, what you call it, the CV writing. Hello, Ike. Hello, Ike. Hello, Ike. Yes, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, afternoon. Yeah, you wanted to come on and ask a question or contribution? Yeah, question. So, okay, go uh, ahead, Mr. Doc, I just wanted to know uh, how is it? Um, what are the requirements if you have to apply from uh, uh, a place like uh, Doha, Qatar? What are the requirements for what? I mean, um, UK. Yeah, if you go to the uh, UK government website, www.gov.uk, yeah, mm -hmm. you will find all the requirements over there. As long as you live in Qatar, or Doha legally, then it's the same process that you're going to follow. Yeah, very well then. Yeah. Um, so when you go to that UK is, government website, every information that you need for visa, whether it's a skilled worker visa, 
whether it is a work visitor visa, whether it's a dependent visa, any type of visa, uh, 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 what you call it, all the information is on that website, yeah? Very if good. you are looking to apply for a skilled worker visa, there is a list of occupations that meet the skilled worker visa requirement. So you need to, whilst you're on that site, you need to check for shortage occupation list and check the list of occupations. If you've got any of those occupations and you qualify, then obviously you will be able to start looking for sponsorship, which is companies we are in the UK, that are in the UK, that will be able to grant you a certificate of sponsorship to come to the UK and work. Very well, sir. Um, so we don't have the one such as um, whereby the company, I mean, uh, somebody can, for instance, maybe you, you have your company, you can, um, you can guarantee of. Uh, that's what, uh, that's, what that's, that's what I just explained to you. That is the skilled worker visa, the sponsorship visa. Mm -hmm. So if you go on there, all the information and everything is on there. But you need to check. The first thing you need to do is to check that the work that you are doing, you are on the shortage occupation list because there are certain jobs that only meet that particular criteria or the requirements. So if the job that you do, the work that you do is not on that list, then it means that obviously you don't qualify. Then you have to look for other alternative or other routes for you to be able to come to the UK. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, okay, sir. Yeah. so when you go to that website, you look for shortage occupation list. There's over 500 list of occupations listed on there. If you've, you've uh, your requirement, uh, what you call it, your job is part of that requirement, then on that same website, you look for uh, what you call it, what we call uh, sponsor, register of sponsors, register of sponsors. Then uh, once you found the register of sponsors, they, those are companies that have got the certificate of sponsorship for you to, but you need to be able to read everything about the skilled worker visa and understand the process first, because at the moment, as I'm, you haven't read it, as I'm explaining to you, you are asking me exactly the same question, which means you don't really understand the process. So the first thing is that you need to find a company that will give you uh, what you call it, that has got a job offer for you. And the mm -hmm. job offer is what you do and you meet the requirements. Then they give you the COS. Once they give you the COS, then you use the CO, which is a certificate of sponsorship, to go and apply for the job. Once you've applied for the job, uh, to apply for the visa, sorry. Once you've gotten the visa, then you can come here. But you have to foot all your bills and everything. Yeah, so that's yes. the process. So you need to find, you need to check that you qualify first. If you qualify, then you need to start looking for a company that will give you the job. And that company that will give you the job has to be registered in the UK. And they will are the ones who can give you the certificate of sponsorship to come to apply for a visa. Then finally, obviously, come to the UK if you do get your visa. Very well noted, sir. Okay. Uh, one more thing, please. Um, ah, dun, 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 dun. Guys, please. I'm in a meeting. Hello. Those who are calling, please don't call me now. Hello, is it Kwame now? Kwame. Yeah, Mr. Lawrence. Good, good yeah, afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah. My question is, um, yesterday a friend of mine in UK sent me a link um, of some of the sponsorship companies' websites, which um I've applied. With, um, with, uh, but I am um, the question is my CV. I don't know whether the CV that I, I made of um, that gives me the chance to be qualified for the work that I applied of. Um, since you were saying that you are about to teach us how to, to make the, the, the CV, I'll be very glad if we, we uh -huh. start on that because I wouldn't know that that CV that I used to give me that chance of me being accepted as. Um, applying for okay yeah so yeah so as i said yeah if you stay on for a while yeah i'm, I'm going to because i need to pick a few questions as just as you've come on and straight after that i'm probably going to be doing this for let's say five ten minutes then i'll go straight into the cv yeah okay so um then okay. second one too is um um we would we would have to be on an age limit before um i'm being accepted is is age also counts for what 
for applying um, some of the jobs over there because I don't know if they 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 are going for mm, age as much a factor. Uh, normally, the only uh, the only jobs that normally come with age restrictions are probably the British Army and the Navy and etc. Because of obvious reasons, the training. But even that, they are not recruiting. They are not recruiting people from outside the UK. But obviously, the younger, if you're applying for a skilled worker visa, what I know from experience is the younger you are, then obviously the higher your opportunity for you to be able to get a visa. Because which means that the company knows, that especially, and it also depends on the nature of the work. Let's say if you're going to be working in a warehouse or you're going to be, let's say, doing a care job or hospital job, you need to be somebody who is very active. So let's say if somebody is in their 50s, or somebody's in their late 40s and the person applied with somebody who is in their early, early 30s, such a job which requires a bit more somebody to be very active, then there could be a high possibility that obviously that particular person, but uh, normally that will be deemed as uh, a direct discrimination and companies in the UK do not want to be seen as discriminating against other applicants. So yeah, in, indirectly, it probably must happen, it might happen, when they are scanning or reviewing the CVs, but obviously it means that they might not contact you because of that grounds, but they cannot come to you and tell you that they didn't pick you or select your CV or solicit your CV because of your age. Yeah, because that would be direct discrimination. Okay. All right. So we are, I'll be on standby waiting for the, the teaching on the CV. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that probably. Uh, let me pick two more calls. Two more people are here. Let me pick them, then yeah, we will go straight into it. Guys, share this, share this with your friend and share it with your friend. As I said, I'm going to be going through or going around discussing about how to write a winning CV, a winning CV. If you're already in the UK or if you are outside the UK and you are looking to apply for a skilled worker visa or any other type of job, it's a template that we're going to be going through. And if you are able to follow that particular template, it's going to help you. Please, if you come on and you've got any noise in the background, can you put yourself on mute, please? Asda, 2022-07. Asda. Yeah. Asda. Yeah, hello. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, yeah good, good evening. evening. Good evening. Good evening. Go ahead, sis, please. Yeah. Okay. Go Bye. ahead. Oh, um... Like, I don't really know much about what you are talking about, but I just stumbled on it. Okay, so can you stay in the background and listen before you come on? What we are talking about, what we are talking about is, uh, yeah, is uh, talking everything about travel, about, it's just general okay. advice and information, websites okay. that you have, to, in case you are interested in traveling to the UK, either coming as a student, coming as a skilled worker visa, coming as a visitor, or coming as a tourist to the UK, yeah? Okay. And also general lifestyle in the UK. If you're already in the UK and you're looking for jobs and all of that, that's what we talk about okay. on this page. So if you are interested, obviously you can follow me and anytime I come on live, I've done loads and loads and loads of videos on my page. You can check that okay. where I've got videos in case you are a student and you are listening. I've done videos that has got uh, what you call a scholarship opportunities, fully funded scholarships to the UK, to Canada, to the okay. USA. You can look at it and apply for it. And it's got uh, what you call it. Most of the courses or the programs are starting from September 2023 and also September 2024. So there's enough time to be able to submit or make that application. So that's what we talk about on this page, yeah? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, you're welcome. That's very lovely. Um, yeah, brother... Brother Joseph. Yes, sir. Hello, Brother Joseph. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Hello, sir. All right, good afternoon, Go ahead, sir. How go do ahead. You... Good afternoon. Uh, how oh, do you do? I just want to ask. I'm fine. Please, I just want to know. I'm in Ghana as well. I just wanted to know, like, is there anything like um, work and payment, uh, work and payment as, uh, in UK as well? Work and pay? Yes, please, as well. No, that that is there is no work and pay here. Yeah, I don't know what you mean by okay. work and pay. Work and pay here in the UK will be like uh, tantamount to slavery. But you do work. You need to get a job first before you come here. 
But if somebody decides that they're going to bring you, normally they'll be for, putting you into forced labor. So work and pay, nah, there's no work and pay in the UK. But obviously, if you get a job, you work and the your, 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 so if I understand you right, if you are talking about work and pay, like people do work and pay in Ghana, that is not what is like over here. Yeah, unless you get a sponsorship visa, okay. then obviously it means that the company will be giving you uh, what you call it a direct employment for you to come here and work. Okay, guys, let's dive straight into uh, what you call it. The if you are interested, we're going to dive straight into the CV, the CV uh, writing for you to be able to uh, write a winning CV. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And that's what we're going to be discussing. So hopefully, if you can see my screen, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah. So if you can see my screen, if you uh, type in the comment section scene, if you can see my screen, please type in the comment section scene here today. That's what we are going to be talking about today. So if you can see my screen, just type in the comment section scene. Yeah. So if you've just joined, if you've just joined, what we are talking about on this page is uh, my name is Dr. Lawrence. And uh, we discuss on this page everything about travel. Yeah, of especially to the UK, we give a lot of information, we share ideas and knowledge, and we also give websites about where people can go to and they can, if they are looking for information, and where they will be able to uh, find that particular information. So thanks very much. If you are not following, you might want to follow. And this basically has become, I'm doing this as a result of a lot of people have contacted me a lot of people have contacted me especially those who are already in the uk they have contacted me and they've requested that i do this specifically for them in case probably they are outside the uk and they are applying for a skilled worker visa how to be able to put a statement together how to be able to put a cv or a curriculum vitae together or how to be other people call a resume how to be able to put it together that will help you to be able to land that particular job yeah so that's what we're going to be going through here so this is the i'm going to be going through the format then after that we go through the nitty gritties we look we look at the details of the uh of how to write a proper uh what you call it cv uh if you are looking to apply for a job guys please share it for us share it for us so that your friends will also see it so here most people, when they are writing a CV, I know a lot of people have got different templates. People put uh, maybe their picture somewhere there, yeah, and they put loads and loads and loads of other information somewhere there. I just put their date of birth. If you put your date of birth and all of that information on your CV, then basically employment empl employers can, uh, company or companies can basically discriminate against you. That's a question that somebody asked earlier on. Let's say you put all your CV and on there, on the CV, you've added your date of birth on there. So straight away, if let's say that particular job involves a lot of uh, heavy lifting or involves a lot of physical work, then what the employer is probably going to do is they're just going to take your CV and chuck it in the bin because at the end of the day, they know that they need somebody who is a bit useful, who is a bit younger, who is a bit more stronger to be able to obviously uh, do that particular work. So that can easily disqualify you based on that and you might not obviously be shortlisted. So if you are writing in a CV, the best thing for you to do is to make sure that you don't add any any picture to it because if they want to discriminate against you as well in case probably you are of uh, a minority ethnic background and uh yeah that could easily be used as a sort of discrimination you don't know the person who is going to be reviewing your cv if that particular person does not like your race then obviously you can be discriminated against so you don't put in a picture on there your name Obviously, as it says, your name across the top there, which is good enough, and your address, 
yeah so your address normally should be your home address or if you've got a work address once you've sorted permission from your company then obviously you can put your back normally you have to put your name address especially if you don't want your employer if you don't want your employer to know that obviously you are seeking another opportunity so it's always good to be able to put uh, what you call it your name across the top there if you've got any titles or you've got uh, what you call it any uh, post nominals after your name then you can add it to it whether you belong to ACCA, SIMA or your IOSH or you are yeah you're a doctor or anything then you can add uh, those uh, titles to it and also the post nominals you can add them onto your CV so the address as I said earlier if it's your home address that will be very good and here if you've got a mobile number and a telephone number then you add both of them to it and obviously your email address this email address is very important because sometimes you get because uh, I also as a company director as uh, for uh, my construction company as well sometimes when you are some CVs come in front of you and you are reviewing it you see that all these people they put some interesting names for their email address so if you've got any funny or any interesting name or any uh but and if your name on there is a bad language or it's a foul language on there please or offensive name please change it change it and just use your normal name so if i'm laurie samoa so just put laurie samoa at gmail.com if you go on there and uh what you call it and laurie samoa has been taken then you just add one or two or maybe just add your year year of uh, what you call it, maybe your month of birth or some other uh, what you call it numbers to it so that it will be able to stand out. So if there is any offensive name or any foul name or anything that is not pleasant, then obviously change it in your email and just make it look like an official email. Just use your name, stick to it so that it kind of reflects the name that you've got up there. And I'm going to go through the main points, then after that, I'll delve into the details. So apart from that, you are looking at your, these are the main headings that you should be having in a proper CV. This CV, as I'm talking about, I'm in the UK, so I'm talking it from a UK perspective. But I believe that this CV writing, this skills is as per international standard. So if you follow it, then you are applying for any skilled worker jobs or any job, irrespective of whichever country that you are. This is one of the best formats that you can find. So the first thing you need is a personal statement. It's a personal statement. So the personal statement, I will come to that in, in, later. And uh, that is one of the headings. So you write the headings down and you've got your key skills. Remember, the operative word is key you need your key skills what are your most important skills and these key skills that you are uh, you are putting in here make sure that it is directly related to the job that you are applying some people will put some skills in there which has got no correlation no relationship with the job that they are applying for at all so the key skills should be very very uh what you call it effective and also it should meet the requirements or the needs or the job description of what you are going to apply for. The next heading that you're looking at is your employment history, your employment history. That's also very, very important. And normally when you come here, we will come that we'll discuss that into details. Yeah, your achievements and your responsibilities, then you have to try and obviously list all the information. We'll come back and, and look at, now we are just looking at the heading. So employment history, You've got that and you can break it down if you've done various jobs or you've worked for various different organizations, you can list it down there. Guys, if you just joined, what we are talking about is we are talking about how to write a proper and effective CV. And here, this is as per the UK standard. And obviously, as it is as per UK standard, it's according to international standards. And I believe that wherever you are, then you will be able to tailor it to be able to meet your needs and to meet your requirements. So once you've done that, the next heading that you are looking at is your education. That is the next heading, your education, which is also very, very important. And the next one that you go on to are your hobbies and your interest, your hobbies and your interest, your hobbies and your interest. So here again, 
yeah we'll look at that into details as well and the last part the last heading should be your references the last part should be your references so now starting from the top these are the main heading of an effective cv your personal statement your key skills your employment history then also your education yeah your hobbies and your references these are the most effective parts of uh, what you call it the main parts of uh, writing a cv so now we are going to look at the details the details on here so now let's go down here and look at the cv format and look into the details if you want to find the template this particular template you can find it from that particular website is uh, www.read.co.uk www.read.co.uk career advice forward slash free cv template you can find everything that we're going through on that particular website so you can screenshot it or you can write it down and that will help you a lot okay yes yeah. so now as i said we're giving all those headings so now we're going to look at the details of each particular heading so now the personal statement if you are writing a personal statement look at the personal statement i'm going to read this you must have a very very punchy personal statement yeah like a boxer you know when you get to the rink you, your first few uh what you call it punches that you throw determine obviously your stamina whether you're going to go the long haul or you just probably going to be knocked out within the first couple of minutes so your personal statement because remember if you are submitting any if you are submitting any uh cv for employment remember that the moment the job has been advertised it's not only you especially in the cv here in the uk here sorry all these companies most of them have got their website they've got they upload the job onto their website but again they are also obliged and as part of their company policies to be able to uh what you call it advertise that particular role so that other people they don't discriminate either directly or indirectly against other people so they are supposed to advertise they are supposed to advertise a role so most companies in the uk will advertise on read.co your uk on cv library they will also advertise on indeed most of them will advertise on hayes career structure these are all uh what you call a jobs website within the uk that most companies will use so let's say the company puts out a job for let's say a carpenter or maybe a nurse or maybe qualified teacher they are looking for but you should know that the job has been opened to everyone if it's a skilled worker visa and probably it's open to people or to overseas you should know that millions and thousands of people who see that job are more than likely who wants to migrate to the uk are more than likely going to apply if it is within the uk thousands and thousands of people are going to see it and also uh recruitment agencies will pick up these roles yeah and they will contact other people so that they can get them to be able to uh shortlist it, get their shortlisted for that particular send uh, so those agencies or the recruitment companies they are the ones who are going to be contacting individuals directly asking them whether they are interested in these roles or not so most employers or recruitment companies or hr normally they've got about between 15 to 20 seconds to be able to review your cv about 15 to 20 seconds to review your cv so if they start going through your cv and your personal statement is not punchy enough it's not effective it's not good enough then they are not going to be even going to read further because that is the first thing that catches your eye that talks about you as the individual yeah your personality as the individual so now let's read this one personal statement it says a conscientious and professional uh, pe a professional person as a professional person assist a personal assistant with extensive experience in administration pa and secretarial roles currently seeking a new position as an executive pa a highly organized and efficient individual whose thorough 
and precise approach to projects has yielded excellent results. Recent achievements with my current employer include the implementation of an innovative new filing and indexing system. So here you can read as an employer or as a recruiter, if you read that, that tells you about the character of the individual. You haven't met the person, but from what they've written there, it's about their person. It's about their demeanor. So it tells you the person yeah, is very professional. They are an effective individual, even though they could probably be lying in there. But that's what they are telling you, that they are also very thorough and they are also very precise, which is needed, which is some of the skills, which is some of the qualities or the values that are needed for almost a lot of jobs. Yeah. And also they also talk about excellent results. So they have mentioned or they've talked about their achievements in the role that they worked in. So and they have given that particular information. So the moment you read that, you can see that that is very punchy. And the moment you've read that as a recruiter or as an employer, as an, as an employer, you think that, oh, I want to talk to that lady. I want to talk to that person who wrote that. And that's where helps you whether you're going to be shortlisted or you're not going to be shortlisted. So here it says it talks about tailor it to the role. So, so I know some people will have one CV and they will use it to apply for every role. Yeah, they will use it to apply for everyone. Guys, if you've just joined, thanks very much for joining. Those who have uh, followed, thanks very much, uh, Fauzan. Thanks very much for following. What we are talking about here is CV writing. If you are interested in uh, what you call it, applying for a skilled worker visa job to the UK, how are you supposed to write your CV? Or if you are already in the UK, how to be able to go about writing and a winning and an effective CV. So here, don't have one CV, one fits all for every role that you're going to be applying. If the person, sometimes if they're applying for a senior management role, they are using the same CV. If they're applying for a care, a care assistant, they are using the same CV. If they're applying as a nurse, they are using the same CV. If they're applying as a teacher, they are using the same CV. They are not changing anything about their personal statement. But sometimes too, the information that you put on there, not sometimes, all the time, the information that you put in a personal statement should reflect yourself and also the nature of the particular role that you're applying for so you say you have to tailor it to the role make sure it's bespoke it's specific for the role that you are applying include some examples so here some of the examples that the person talked about here it says recent achievement with my current employer include the implementation of an innovative filing system that is an example an innovative filing and indexing system that is an example that they've given on over there and also include examples we've talked about that and uh, avoid cliches yeah so some people all that they would do is just go online and just copy and paste what they've seen online you should see that you should know that most people are going to be doing exactly the same thing so if you just go online just copy and paste it you should know that recruiters are going to be getting cvs which is exactly the same as yours and that tells me that the person is not in it's not it's not very uh, what you call it. It's not very serious about the role that they're applying for because they have just gone to the website, copied and pasted it. And I've got 10, 15 CVs in front of me. That reads exactly the same. So all that is, I'm going to do with that is just put, put it in the bin. Just rip it into pieces and just put it in the bin next to me. So we should be able to make sure that it's tailored to the role, include some examples and avoid cliches. Yeah, don't write your CV just like everybody else. So here we talk about start with a personal statement tailored to the role. We've talked about that in terms of the structure, consciously try and answer the following questions. So what you need to include in there is you should make sure that you've got these questions at the back of your mind. Who you are, talk about yourself, your character, your demeanor. What do you have to offer? What do you have to offer? Because most companies, they are employing you. They are going to be paying you because they want to know what you can bring to the table what you can bring to the table, what you can offer them. No, at the end of the day, obviously, they're going to be paying you at the end of the day or giving you some pegs or some fringe benefits on the side. But what are you going to do to be able to help their company, to be able to grow and to develop? And that attitude is what is going to set you apart from everybody else. So what are you aiming for in your career? What, what is your ambition? What is your ambition? What are you coming? Are you just coming there just for the wages? 
or do you just need a job that's why you come in there or you've got you've got an aim you've got a purpose you've got an objective to be able to help the company to grow and to develop as well as you the individual developing personally and obviously professionally so you should be able to think of, ar around these things when you are writing your personal statement what the ones i've, what I've highlighted over there who are you what do you have to offer that company and what you are aiming for in your career what you are aiming for in your career okay yeah so now let's go on to the second heading which we're talking about as the employment history this also is one area which is very very important it's another area which is very very important that you need to be able to consider and here basically it has been broken down into what we call smart resume goals smart and they, that is just an acronym the s stands for specific the m stands for measurable the a stands for attainable the r stands for risky and also the t stands for the timetable so when you are writing your employment history those are some of the things that you should be thinking about you should be focusing around as you're writing obviously your cv your winning cv to apply for jobs in the uk whether you are already in the uk or you are outside the uk to and you want to get a winning cv to be able to apply for a skilled worker visa job and that will set you apart from the thousands and the hundreds of CVs that recruiters are looking for on a daily basis. So specific, let's start with this one here. You have to set specific goals, yeah? You have to set specific, I uh, cannot say that, set specific goals. And here, this means that you select a definite, uh, what do you call it, a definite career, career niche, yeah? A definite career niche, industry or position. So it has to be very, very specific. Yeah, your employment history. Yeah, it has to be specific. And also measurable, you set measurable goals. Somebody might probably put on their CV, uh, let's say I was able to, the company that you joined, let's say was um, turning over and uh, making net profit of, let's say, about 10%. And he will say that during my time with the company, the company was able to uh, increase their net profit from 10% to about 50%. You know that some of these things, they are verifiable. If somebody wants to go and check it, they can go and check it. And so set something of that sort, yeah, you have to make sure that you are not uh, exaggerating. You have to talk about certain things that are, what do you call it? that are very tangible, that is real, that makes sense, and not obviously over-exaggerating, obviously just making misrepresentations or just making false statements. Attainable, you set attainable goals. Let's say that maybe when you join your previous company, let's say within your department, there was uh, maybe a paperwork that they always had to be printed, they always had to be printed and people to fill in. But maybe when you joined, you were able to introduce some kind of software or you're able to introduce some kind of computer-based training or even the filing system. If you are able to train people on how to be able to set aside the filing system properly so that it will be easy for you to be able to retrieve documentation or something of that sort, that sets you apart. It means that you will set yourself certain goals in your previous role and obviously you were able to attain or you were able to achieve it during the time that you were with the company yeah set risky goals because obviously business uh, it comes with a lot of risk so if your goals that you are setting if they are not risky enough if they are not risky enough then obviously it means that you are not very you are somebody who is very laid back yeah so the risk that you set it has to be very uh, risky goals obviously it has to be calculated and also the timetable set goals with a definite timeline the definite timeline there's no point in setting a goal yeah within three months knowing that that goal can never be achievable within three months it may be obviously it could be achieved within a year so you are over promising and obviously you will not be able to deliver it so you have to make sure that you're giving yourself enough time 
yeah just applying a bit of common sense approach to that to be able to deal with certain goals that you set for yourself so that is also very important so here let's look at this employment history guys if you've just joined what we are talking about here is uh how to write a winning cv for applying for jobs in the uk so if you're already in the uk or you're outside the uk and you are looking for uh, to apply for a skilled worker visa you might want to stay stick and stay or even you might want to send share it with your friends with your brothers and sisters who you think they might probably uh, benefit from this or wherever you are you can employ you can uh, what you call it, apply this strategy into writing your cv and that is going to help you to be able to land your dream job wherever you are because this is a template that cuts across obviously uh, the globe yeah, and especially, obviously, if you are in the UK or you're looking to come to the UK, that is going to be very beneficial to you as well. So empl employment history, achievements and responsibilities. Let's read some of this. And here, one main thing that you should take note of it is that there shouldn't be any gaps. There shouldn't be any gaps yeah, within your employment history. So let's say here they've listed April 2011 yeah to present so that's what the em employment history so when you are listing uh, a, a, what would you call it if let's say there was uh, a gap between maybe 2012 uh, 20, 2012 sorry 2012 to let's say 2013 then obviously make sure that that gap you put something in there if you were traveling or you weren't traveling, or you uh, probably took some time off work due to some bereavement, or maybe you went back to school to learn a course or anything of that sort, just put something in there, yeah, to be able to uh, close that gap, because you don't want to leave any gaps in there. If you leave gaps in there, all that recruiters will be doing or employers will be doing is asking them questions, asking themselves questions. Why have you got these gaps, obviously, in your CV? Why have you got these gaps in your CV? So you want to try and avoid that. So let's look at some of the employment history. It says here you talk about your achievements and your responsibilities. What were your responsibilities in your previous role and what did you achieve? So here implemented a change of stationary supplier, reducing cost by 20%. And here it has to be what you did. If you were part of a team, yeah, you have to talk about your contribution yeah, within your team. If you are part of a department, you have to talk about your achievement. It's your responsibility, your achievement. It's not what your team or the company achieve as a whole. It is your achievement that you have to talk about. Yeah, because that's what you are being scored on. Remember, this CV that you are writing on a curriculum vitae, that is a representation. Because if the person sees it, yeah, the moment because you've not been invited for an interview it should tell me everything about you as an individual so everything on here should be about yourself if you're part of a department you're part of a team or you're part of a group or you're part of a company it should be about your contribution that you are talking about and your achievement here it says reorganized the meet uh the meeting booking process implementing an online system which all staff can access leading to reduced direct conflicts within the team so here this is what the individual actually did within their team devised and implemented a new filing system and indexing so let's say if you are a nurse yeah and uh you work with uh uh you are you work with the within the theater or the recovery team so you are part of a team so you know, say you work in the theater you assist with the doctors and all of the anesthetists uh, to be able to undergo or to undertake or perform all these operations or surgeries, etc. So here you talk about what you are responsible for within your team, whether you are preparing the patient or maybe after the patient has gone through uh, maybe the surgery and the process, how you are able to recover them if you work in recovery and obviously how you maintain that they are stable. You're taking them from the theater to the normal world, making sure that they are stabilized, they are feeding, they are taking their medication and all of that. So that is your contribution with the team. If you are a teacher as well, 
you are talking about your contribution. Let's say you teach a class five or you teach a subject in secondary school or you, that's what you talk about. Maybe when you took over the class, you realized that the performance, uh, you have less than about 30 students in your class, but most of them, their performance within maths wasn't very good. So as a teacher, maybe you have to dif devise different uh, pedagogical skills or different method uh, methodology to be able to help them. Maybe you change your, uh, your resources, your training resources, and you were able to use other strategies to be able to help the kids to be able to learn. You introduce a new way of undertaking homework. Maybe you're giving them more of project work and all of that. So it got the children interested in the role. So you talk about personal things like that. Let's say if you were an engineer and you were involved in the construction or in the design of a project, then you talk about that particular aspect of your design. Maybe you had to introduce or maybe your contribution, how the company, instead of maybe using an alternative design, they were able to save a lot of money because they followed your particular design. If you were a carpenter, maybe you thought outside the box and you were able to introduce certain things in place. So it's just talking about you and focusing on yourself as an individual. So just think about the job that you do and just think about what are some of the things that you could have done. Sometimes maybe you didn't do it, somebody did it, but you are put right in the CV. Yeah, so you can just put it on there, but as your achievement or your suggestion or something that you did and something that you achieved and that will set you, that will set you apart. Yeah, that will make you different from what all other people are doing. Guys, if you've just joined, we are talking about how to write a winning CV. I'm based uh, in the UK. So if you're already in the UK or you're interested in applying for a skilled worker visa, obviously you need to write a CV as part of it. Whether you are or maybe wherever you are, you will need to write a winning CV in case you're going to be looking for jobs. So that's what we're talking about here. So if you've joined, you haven't joined the wrong page at all, or you can share with your friends if you want to share it. Touch your screen, hold it, and your friends list will open below. Then send invites. You can invite as many as 20 to 30 of your friends and ask them to join in. We've got over 70 people. Guys, let's power tap. If you want to tap, it's just on your screen. Just keep tapping on your screen like so. Tap, keep tapping constantly on your screen. A lot of people are getting got get it, are gonna get the notification and they're gonna decide whether they want to join or not. So, guys, please power tap, please power tap for us. Power tap, like it, like it. Send your likes, send your likes. You can send 200 likes, 300 likes. Keep sending it. Yeah, let's get to 10K within two minutes, guys. Come on, keep sending it. So now it says that your employment history, you put recent job first. So let's say if you've just worked for, let's say Unilever, yeah, within the last year, that's what you put first. And the other se jobs, second, third, third, fourth, fifth, and so on and so forth. Then also you talk about what you have achieved. That's what we've talked about and include required skills. So the skills that you are talking about here should be linked to the role that you are applying for. The skills that you are talking about here should be linked to the role that you are applying for. So here it goes on to talk about when it comes to your employment history, write in reverse chronological order with the most recent jobs coming to the top. So yeah, that's what we just talked about. The recent jobs comes to the top and obviously the previous jobs that you've had obviously comes to the bottom of the uh what you call it the employment history and just make sure it's very important there are no gaps in between them don't leave any gap between the cv so if there's a particular year or maybe a couple of months that you didn't work or you're not working for a company make sure that you get something to be able to cover those particular gaps and whatever you put in there it should be relevant to the role that you are applying for or you should be able to explain it role that you're applying for the next one let's go to the next heading which is education so education when you are writing your education this is how you present it on your cv so here you've got education and here it talks about college yeah so you've went to a college or university uh, or the school name you just put it on there normally what you should do is the same thing with the employment history you write your latest institution that you've attended, that one should come first. The latest institution. So let's say if you completed your uh, undergraduate or you completed your master's last year, that should come to the top. Or 
if you went to technical school or the highest qualification that you've got or your recent education in secondary school then obviously that should come to the top and the rest as well but normally where you should be going you should be going as far as your secondary school as far as your secondary school uh, education that's where you should be going to your junior high school and all of that that is uh, irrelevant that is irrelevant okay yeah so your education so your college or university or your school name then you just put on there the year that you started and the year that you finished so the month and the year so let's say september 2004 and you finished your program or your course in june 2006 that's what you put over there yeah and uh I just as it's listed over here your a levels so if it's a levels or if it's university then you can list some of the uh what you call it the major courses so the what you are listing on here you should know that it should be relevant it should be a relevant skills which is, has been listed as part of the jd as part of the job description of what you are applying for so here general studies b english c mathematics c so here what you're listing on here should be relevant to whatever but some people will probably have the whole lot listed listed on there if it's a degree an undergraduate then obviously you just put your course of study and also whether you had a first class or you had a second upper or second lower and uh, obviously enter that particular information on there and if you go back to your secondary school again your school name the year that you started and the year that you finished and whatever you had 10 GCSEs just list it like that so if you have let's say six passes or seven passes just put it on there you don't have to list all the 10 subjects individually just like it listed over there so if your grades were like a to e or a to c because at the end of the day remember you are going to be attaching your transcript or you are going to be attaching your certificate to it as well so if they want to make references to it then they can always uh refer to your transcript and also to your certificates that you've got as well for your various qualifications so here it talks about the education again it says that state the number of qualifications that you've got so if you've got a phd you've got your masters you've got your degree you've got your secondary school education or if you've got any professional education Maybe you did a ACCA, you did your IOSH and you are a chartered member, you did your SEMA or you are a chartered engineer, you are an architect, you are a surveyor or you've got any professional qualification, technical qualification or anything or institution that you've attended, you can write that there as well. Yeah, you state general grades. Yeah, and also you include modules if needed. So here where it talked about maths including maths and english and here so the modules that you state on here just make sure that it's relevant to the it's relevant to the the work that you're going to be applying for yeah so now we go on to the next heading which is hobbies and interest your hobbies and interest sorry i was just drinking some water so here, when you go to your hobbies and interests, this is where most people, they tend to fall over on themselves because they realize that maybe you haven't got any hobby. Your hobby is probably just watching TV or your hobby is just going out for a run or maybe just, uh, let's say, playing tennis or swimming or horse riding or maybe if your hobby is eating or anything at all or maybe just laying about uh, laying about or lying about or probably just watching telly here if you know that the hobby that you're going to put on there is not directly relating to let's say the job that you're applying for is a warehouse operative or warehouse attendant and they are talking about they need somebody who is, needs to be active because you have to be doing some manual handling, lifting some boxes or driving a heavy plant or machine forklift or something of that sort or operating a crane. And you just go and put on there. Your hobby is sleeping. Such a person, obviously. Yeah, it means that you are not very, very active. You understand? So uh, th that could probably be uh, what you call it, a negative for you, maybe a disadvantage for you. So here. You should be looking at something, a hobby that is probably of interest. 
yeah when you get a job they're not going to ask you uh what you call it to come and play your hobby or they're not going to say ah you listed this in as your hobby so come and demonstrate for us whether you actually know how to do this yeah so if you haven't got any hobby and you cannot put anything on there yeah you have to probably manufacture it and look at the job specs or the job descriptions and probably just include something of that if you haven't got anything on there at all then obviously it's better to leave it blank just normally, normally uh, a lot of people will just put reading uh what you call it just make sure that obviously you are getting lots of knowledge and all of that so just make sure that what you're putting on there is relevant but obviously if employers also know that obviously you are helping society maybe you are a volunteer you are working for red cross or maybe when there is an incident you are going to assist with nadmo and all these you know that they think that ah oh, this guy he's going out of his he's going out of his own free will and doing unpaid work so such a person will be a good uh what you call a fit or a, uh, what you've got a very positive fit for this particular role for this organization because sometimes maybe in your work you might need to do a bit of overtime you might need to sacrifice and obviously work some extra shift or extra hours to be able to achieve your goals maybe to be able to meet certain deadlines so if you are somebody who has got that volunteering mentality or attitude you like helping and assisting people and all of that then obviously that is something that can be seen as a very very positive uh trait or positive attitude that will help you to be able to land that particular dream job so here don't feel like you have to include them yeah that's why i said if you don't have to you don't have one or you don't have any of them which is relevant to the job don't feel like you have to include them but if you have to include them, just make sure that what you're putting in there is something that is relevant to the role that you're applying for. Guys, if you've just joined, what we are talking about, we're talking about how to write a winning CV. If you are in the UK or you're outside the UK and you're looking to apply for a job in the UK, how to be able to write a winning CV. So these are it's international standards. So it's not only going to help you to be able to uh, write uh, what you call it, a winning CV for jobs in the UK. But also, wherever you are around the world, if you are able to follow this template or this format, it will go a long way uh, to be able to help you to be able to land that dream job of yours that you've been looking for. Okay, going forward, it says ensure they prove your skills. That's what I've just said. Ensure that they prove your skills. So uh, if you don't have any, don't feel like you have to include them, especially if overused cliches uh, like socializing with friends and watching films are uh, all you think of yeah because if it's not going to benefit you in the role or it doesn't yeah it's not going to help you to land the juju or you might so well just leave it out and not even bother yourself adding anything make sure that what you add on there is unique it's unique and it sets you apart okay and the last one that we're going to look at before we start talking to people who wants to obviously ask questions and the last one that we're going to talk about is references references most people they will just add the name of people their references normally the type of references that employers in the uk are looking for most of the time they'll ask you for two main references in very rare cases they will ask you for three references and these references, one of them will have to come from what they call a character reference and an, uh, what you call it, a past employee or empl uh, employer reference, character reference and employer reference. So on here, all that you are required to put on there, especially in the UK, is references are available upon request. References are available upon request because here in the UK, for instance, we've got something we call uh, General Data Protection Regulations, GDPR, or what we used to be called Data Protection. Yeah. So as part of the GDPR, before you are able to provide somebody's personal details, i.e. their name, uh, maybe their address or the, where they work for, their employment, their telephone number and their email uh, number to a third party, you need to get their consent. And the employer, probably they're going to be sharing that particular document with not just their HR, but maybe other people within the organization. So it's better you make sure that you put references are available upon the request. Then before you do that, make sure that you've also already spoken to your references. Some people, what are mistakes? Because in the UK, 
trust me, they are going to check those references. They are going to want to talk to them or they're going to send them an email. So at least it's better that you include, if they request for the references, then you provide them with the name, obviously their email address or a telephone number. So at least if they are unable to speak to them, they will be able to send them an email. Then you speak to your referee, the person that you've used them as a reference, and let them know that you've applied for a job A, B, C, and they should be expecting a reference from them in case they do request it. But on your CV, when you are submit submitting it for a job, just make sure that you put on there, references are available upon request. References are available upon request. When the employer contacts you, your, your CV is shortlisted and they contact you and they want to invite you for interview and uh, whether it's a face-to-face -face interview or sometimes if you're outside the UK, if they want to interview to normally be over Zoom meeting or maybe over uh, Skype or it will probably be over Teams meeting and they can have that discussion with you and if you do get such opportunity to have a meeting just make sure that you are in an area which is quiet yeah where there isn't any background noise where you've got a strong signal and your signal is going to be dropping and cutting and dropping and cutting and all of that otherwise it's going to be very frustrating and trust me they might not probably get back to you because you might not be the only person who has been shortlisted for that interview there might be a lot of there might be a lot of other people who have been shortlisted for that interview. So just make sure that the moment you get an opportunity, your name has been shortlisted for an interview, then obviously you are adding, you are making sure that you are in the right place at the right time. The time they give you, you are there on time. You've logged on and ready, obviously, for the, uh, for the interview, whether it's online interview or face-to-face -face interview. So just prep yourself, plan your journey and get there in advance. If you are already in the UK and you have to go there, Maybe get there within 15 or 20 minutes before time. So they know that you are time conscious. Plan your journey and try and get there well in advance before time so that you can sit down, get some water. If you need to use the toilet or use the loo before you're relaxed, then obviously you are fully relaxed and ready for the interview. Then they know that you are also, you've got good time management skills, etc., etc. So as I say, going back to the references normally, there will, most employers will require will require two references, but rarely they might probably require, let's say, three references. Maybe one if you worked on an employer before, they might request for an employer reference. If you just complete a school, then they might probably request a, re a reference, get a reference from your school, or uh, maybe and also a character reference, maybe from uh, somebody who knows you, not a family member, but somebody who knows you, maybe a friend or a previous, a previous uh, colleague that you've worked for in a company where you are no longer working with. So somebody, so a character reference, maybe a reference from a school or university and also an employer reference. These are the references, but on your CV, just put on the references are available on the request. When they ask you, then you can provide the information that they're asking for. So only include references if the employer asks that is very important and make sure you have credible references yeah make sure your references are credible as i said and make sure that you tell them don't just go and concoct or just manufacture any names and emails and telephone numbers and just give it to them because they are going to call them they are going to send them an emails so you should be telling your references in case they move on to the next stage and they are asking to uh, provide the references, ask them to expect it. Yeah. And also ask family, friends, teachers, etc. Yeah. That's if they want any uh, type of color, uh, character reference, then yeah, that's where you will need that or references from schools. Okay. So here, this is the final thoughts on the, remember, this is a template, yeah? So what we've talked about is just a template. Do not do, get, go and copy. Uh, and if you find any CV online, don't just go and copy it, ditto, ditto, from word to word. Just try and tailor it. More importantly, as I talked about, try and tailor it to your needs. Try and tailor it to your needs. And hopefully... Yeah, your name, your address, so that's your home address or where you live, your telephone number or your mobile number and your email address. Your new email address should contain at least 
uh, one or both of your names so that it can easily identify you if there is any bad language or foul language or offensive language you have to take it from there do not include any pictures yeah your personal statement make sure it's punchy enough because as i said earlier most employers spend between 15 to 20 seconds scanning yeah your cv they just scan it if they don't see the relevant information yeah then obviously they're going to put it in the bin and more importantly make sure that your cv if you've got 20 years of experience you have to try and compress it make sure that your cv is not more than two pages make sure your cv is not more than two pages and when you are writing it you can see the characters the way you write it so that it's legible normally most employers will require that maybe your CV, you can see here the font size. If you look here, you can see the font size. The font size should either be 11 or 12. Yeah, the font size should either be 11 or 12. And the spacing should be 1. So there's font size should be this on the Word document. The font size should be 11 or 12 and if you are using uh whether uh calibri or you are using T calibri and uh what you call it tahoma are uh, normally the common ones because it's very clear it's legible to read so your font size should normally be 11 or 12 maximum yeah but most people tend to choose uh 11. you are you are live and they are still calling you i don't know why people do that they've seen that you're live and they're still calling so as i was saying just make sure that your cv does not exceed two pages it doesn't it shouldn't exceed two pages maximum should be two pages so if you've got 30 or 40 years experience make sure that you highlight those experiences which are relevant for the job that you are going to apply for yeah hello guys yeah sorry about that okay so uh, as i was saying just make sure that your the the uh what you call it the font size is maximum 11 uh, sorry maximum 12 so 11 or 12 that is the font size that you should choose and also your spacing the spacing of your characters the spacing of your font size should be uh, a minimum a maximum of one so when you do that you can see what i've got here that is the correct spacing so if everybody is reading it it's very clear it's very legible yeah and yeah you can read it highlight and you can see the way the headings have been highlighted so they you've highlighted these headings with different colors and also with the lines that has under underlined it so it kind of break it the cv and it makes it very very catchy and it makes it very readable and it's legible it's appealing to the eyes so if you just pick it and you are looking at it you think that yes that's what i want to read it because the, te the person has put a lot of time and a lot of effort to be able to write that cv and trust me guys that is going to land you obviously your uh, your dream job or your skilled worker visa job in case probably you have not been able to land one for yourself and that will be able to help you to do it before i spin around my camera and we talk about other stuff we talk about other stuff then yeah let's look at this as well okay so now let's look at some of the websites that you can go if you are looking for a skilled worker visa job guys please power tap please power tap please power tap and share it 
a lot of people contact me and what they say is dog uh we are looking we have been searching for now we've looked at how to write a winning cv so hopefully everybody should be up to speed with that and you should at least now know how to be able to write a winning cv so here this is the website for uk uh all the sponsors in the uk companies in the uk that can give you a sponsorship visa to come to the uk and come and work yeah so that is their website you might want to screenshot it uktsponsors.com or write it down uktsponsors.com guys power it power, uh, power tap power tap so you can just screenshot your page you can just write it down and you go to that website so when you go to that website this is what you see these are names of companies yeah these are the names of companies there are loads and loads and loads of them yeah when you go to the bottom section of the company uh the list you can see on here it says that the list is 20 per page so where you see this arrow you can click on this arrow and when you click on this arrow it will take you to the next page so i've clicked on that arrow now it's taking me to the next page yeah so all these companies who are on these websites these are companies who have got the sponsors who have got be able to give you the cos certificate of sponsorship to be able to come to the uk and come and work if any agency or if any organization contacts you Uh, trying to close this yeah if any organization contacts you or any company contacts you and that company you check this website and that company is not on this website then you should know that that company is uh what a dodgy company so you see the names of all these companies when when you look at this particular blue icon here which has got like a chain in it yeah that is that link will take you to their website if we click on this particular icon here it means that is their linkedin page and it tells you the location where they are in the uk they are based in ilford it tells you what that particular company does that is manufacturing and also worker rating it tells you what they do a rating and also what they can offer you that is a skilled worker visa and here it tells you it says the date uh, when they were added to this particular list yeah so when you look at the date over there some of these companies this one here was added in 2014 2014 this was added in 2018 so sometimes this list keeps getting updated you look at this particular one here it was added in 2023 so there are these because this list keeps getting updated every every day so if new companies are added to it, then obviously the list will be updated. If new companies are removed, then obviously uh, they are no longer qualified to be able to grant skilled worker visas. Then obviously they will be taken away from this particular list. Yeah. So here, let's say you've seen this company it says, uh, let me choose one, Future Technologies Services Limited. This is their website. So if we click on this link, yeah so you get another page that will open and it will take you directly to that particular company's website yeah so when you go to their website then yeah you can find all the vacancies that they've got over there and everything that they've got what they do and more importantly you can find their contact number as well that is your contact number so you can pick their contacts you can email them and you can also call them if you wish to and ask them any opportunities that they've got which is available so that is how you are able to scan through this list so that is the website for you that is the website for you to go and browse so here they've got every company on there the list is 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 uh inexhaustive 
they've got construction companies over there they've got architects over there they've got restaurants over there they've got care home facilities they've got printing facilities on there and loads and loads of them let's go to uh oak home care yeah if you go to oak home care for instance that is a care home obviously and uh, that is their website we go there and that's their facebook page they are based in sudbury in the uk and uh yeah worker rating a skilled worker visa and they were added in october 2022 so now let's go to uh what you call it their website so if you click on that link and we wait for it to upload if you go on that link you click on that link so that is the company's website yeah it's taking us obviously they are uh, what you call it they are home care so it takes it takes you to the company website and here when you can go to their home page it tells you about their team it tells you the services that they provide it tells you the areas that they cover Sudbury Barris and Edmonds and Sudbury Day Center how you can join them that's if you want to work for them the news any news that they keep updating and how to contact them, their head office and their various other uh, centers that you can contact them. And here it says you can make an appointment. You can make an appointment. So that's how friendly that particular page is. So you go on there and you can start searching and you've got some of them plumbing and heating limited, plumbing and heating limited. So if you are a plumber or you're a heating specialist, so here it says that their yeah, website is down. It's not working. So obviously if it's down, there's nothing that you can do about it. And let's go to another website here. Yeah, Crest Hotels. Yeah, Crest Hotels. That is their website. Yeah, and they have got their contact number is based in Birmingham. Their contact number and all their information and what they do and where their hotels are based so if you work within the hospitality industry and all of that then uh sunshine says i'm interested in the work visa what are the procedure yeah if you stick and stay we are going to be going and looking at that as well yeah so that's how you navigate through this particular uh what you call it website so that is the website again if you want to screenshot it this is for only the uk this is only for the uk yeah now i'm going to show you another website i'm going to show you another website that is if you are let me open this particular here if you are somebody who is looking for other opportunities if we are looking for other opportunities, not just in the UK, but in other places. Yeah, if you go to that website as well. So that's I say every time. These are informations. These are informations that will help you to be able to visit these websites. So you've got scholarshipscanada.info. Scholarshipscanada.info. That is another website. And as I keep saying every day, when you go to every website, for you to know that it is a secure website, you should be looking for this padlock here. You click on it and it should give you the features of that particular website. Connection is secure. If you don't see uh, what you call it, this information on there, then it tells you that there is something dodgy or fishy about that website. So when you only go to that website, then you should check the security features by clicking on this particular padlock. So if you don't live in the UK, if you don't want opportunities in the UK, sorry, if you don't want opportunities in the UK only, but you want it in other places, other uh, areas in Europe, USA, Canada, and all of that, that is the website for you. Scholarshipscanada.info. The name is just scholarshipscanada.info. doesn't mean that it's only opportunities in Canada. It's opportunities in other places as well. Yeah, so scholarships canada.info so now we're going to be going through it so here when you come onto this website all that you do is you've got a home tab you've got scholarships you've got jobs in canada 
when you hover it on there you can see that it just opens you've got internship so let's say if you click on the home page guys can you share it can you share it for us i know you are enjoying the information but please share it for us as well so when you click on the home page it just share and power tap it if you want to share it touch your screen hold it down for three to four seconds then send your invitations uh what you call it invite your friends to join in so if we click on the home page there are a lot of adverts on this page so please just make sure that you stay on the right ones you stay on the right ones so once that has opened you see that all the updates so here it's talking about uk scholarships for 2023-2024 yeah there are 200 scholarships uh what you call it for masters in uh, 14 universities in the uk yeah so you click on that for international students and you can go and search for it so if you are an international student and you're looking for scholarships most of the scholarships trust me are 100 percent scholarships as well and some of them up to 70 percent uh scholarship but most of them are 100 percent scholarships so you can go to that website and you can uh what you call it go and check it if you are looking for opportunities in france you want to you speak french and you want to go to yeah then obviously that is a website for you france but this one here is a work visa it's a work visa which means how to apply for a work visa to visit france to go and work so you can go on there and read on the requirements check that obviously you meet the requirements you qualify then if you qualify then obviously you can decide on how to be able to apply that's what i said we are giving you the information on here showing you the websites that you have to go the information that you need to be able to apply for what and for certain types of visas then it will help you so here you look on here as well it says austria yeah Austria first summer internship 2023 in Austria Europe fully funded so this is duration when you click on there it says it's for two to three months yeah duration is for two to three months but it's in Austria yeah when you go here Melbourne University graduate Melbourne yeah so you all know where Melbourne is so here as you can see They've got uh, how many scholarships? 600 scholarships. You can see it's in the corner here, scholarships. Yeah, and here they've got some opportunities in uh, in these places. Is it UAE and uh, Dubai and all those places? Yeah, Wise Emerging Leaders. Yeah, Tesla Internship. Tesla Internship. And also here, Turkey, if you fancy going to Turkey, yeah, they've got some internships over there. If you are into accounting, auditing, and uh, uh, project management, you're a lawyer and you are uh, KPMG, they've also got their uh, internship programs on there. Seoul University, yeah, Seoul University, I think that is probably in Korea somewhere, yeah, if I, yeah, it's in Korea yeah south korea so solely university scholarships so the scholarships are for masters phd and masters leading to mphil yeah that is also deloitte deloitte australia online that is also on there and uh you've also got scholarships in canada university of montreal austria government scholarship austria government scholarship 2023 2024 that is also there so guys as you can see, loads and loads and loads and loads of opportunities are out there. So if you cannot meet, do not meet the requirements to visit the UK or to go to a particular country, if you go to this website, you will see all the information that you will need. Review it, take your time, read it, understand it. If you cannot read, get somebody to help you. Get somebody to help you is scholarshipscanada.info, scholarshipscanada.info. Get somebody to help you to review the page and obviously once you've reviewed the page you can decide whether it's something that you want to do or not so on here we can go to the next tab you can click on the scholarships yeah and you close that advert let's close that advert yeah so as i said there's a loads of adverts so when it pops up just make sure that you close the adverts so these are all scholarships. Can you see that? 
when you click on that scholarships tab it opens here these are all scholarships yeah for the uk and it's all international students it says funded yeah and it tells you when it was uploaded or updated march 2023 3rd of march 2023 yesterday and it was updated yesterday and this one was updated 25th of february so it tells you that there's still enough time for you to be able to review it and apply if you meet the requirements yeah that is the one that we looked at earlier on seoul yeah harvard university mba scholarship fully funded yeah list of universities without yeah so guys those of you who do not write to who do not want to write ielts exams yeah if you don't want to write any ielts exams you've got list of universities without ielts in 2023 updated list so all you need to do let's see if the list is going to pop up yeah so here it gives you let's see yeah so those of you who are too scared of writing ielts you don't want to write the international english language exam here is giving you list of uh, universities that you do not require ielts before you can go to the universities yeah so here loads of them list of without ielts countries in europe in canada in usa uh in the uk yeah so it gives you all these countries australia malaysia uh no uh norway china and turkey uh G germany japan india and all of so it gives you all these of, of information so if you are somebody if you haven't got the ielts and you are thinking about obviously coming to going to any of these countries to go and pursue your degree qualification or your master's or further your education and you don't want to write the IELTS, yeah, then obviously that's an opportunity for you, for you to be able to go. And it's not just universities, as I mentioned. They've also got jobs, opportunities as well. But obviously here we've clicked on the scholarships. So we are looking for the scholarships as well. And that is another route for you to gain visa to go to the various countries. You've got scholarships for japan you've got spain government scholarships switzerland norway you've got germany yeah you've got china when you go to the right hand side here it's loads of them commonwealth uh you've got austria yeah you've got queen's mary that is in the uk you've got germany you've got korea again you've got germany Germany again, you've got New Zealand. Yeah, that's what we just look at. List of scholarships without IELTS. You've got Austria. Yeah, Maldives, UK universities without uh, application fee and IELTS. So those are there. So guys, you've got loads and loads and loads and loads of information. There is a wealth of information. So if you are looking to travel, as I always say, Google should be your, your best friend. Google should be your best friend. Yeah, Google should be your best friend. You can find every information on there. Somebody's asking, what's the website? This is the website. It's https scholarshipscanada.info. https scholarshipscanada.info. That is the website. Yeah, Scholarships Canada. You can screenshot it. Yeah, you can write it down. Yeah. So now we have looked at the scholarships. Now let's go and look at some of the, uh, what you call it, the jobs. So here, let's say jobs, talk about jobs in Canada. Now we've looked at scholarships. Let's look at jobs. So here, as I said, if you don't meet the requirements in one country, then it means that there are, <laughs> there are other countries that have got jobs for you. Yeah. So here, look at this one here. It says Canadian visa sponsorship jobs in 2023. Oh, somebody gave me a heart. Who is that? <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't see the name. <laughs> is it is it my sister Lopez? 
Oh no, it's not Lopez. That's uh Ziana. Ziana, thanks very much. You send a, a hand hat. Thanks very much for the hand hat. Ziana, thanks very much. God bless you. Okay, guys, if you are not sending any gifts, you're not sending anything, what you can do is just power tap it. Just keep power tapping. Yeah. Just keep power tapping. Please, guys, power tap so that your friends also see this, your family members also see this, and they can also decide whether what they want to do with it. Because most of the time, once I finish doing this, a lot of people come into my DM and they're asking me exactly the same questions. Exactly. Yeah, exactly the same questions. Ah, oh, Ziana, thanks very much. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Yeah, thanks. So that's for the good work. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. That's appreciated. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So here says jobs in Canada. Yeah, so and all of these things, guys, you can review these things, you can read all of these things and apply it to yourself. That's the most important thing because everything is written in English. Yeah. If you can read, if you can write, if you can understand it, trust me, guys, you can do it. A lot of people have done it. I have done it. I know a lot of people who did it last year who have done it this year and they have been able to reach their destination. Yeah. Whether it is the UK, they wanted to come to USA, Canada, they want to go to. But if you've got money and you want to pay somebody to do it for you, then you can pay a lot of money to somebody else to do for you. And all that they are going to do is just go and read exactly the same information. And they are just going to come to you, explain it to you, and you are going to listen to them. Yeah, you are going to listen to them and uh, going to help you to fill some forms. They are going to ask you to bring some of these documentation and everything together. Then they're going to ask you to pay them 5000 10000 15000 12000 10000 and all of that. But these information, as I say, they are at your fingertips. They are at your fingertips. All you need to do is just to know where to find the information. Once you find the information, then you spend some time to read it, to understand it, to digest it. It tells you everything. All these developed countries, they do not hide any information from anyone. Every information is there in the open because every citizen has got a right to information. So they just provide it free of charge. They just provide it free of chat. People keep asking uh, the website again. The website is scholarships. It's scholarshipscanada.info. Scholarshipscanada.info. It doesn't mean that it's only for scholarships to Canada. It's for almost everything. That's the, the name of the website. So now let's look at this. If you just joined, what we are talking about is travel. We're talking about visa how to be able to review information, check it yourself, read it, understand it. If maybe your education is not that good, then obviously get somebody else whose education is a bit better than yourself and who will be able to help you or assist you to be able to do it. Next time, if you've got any questions and you come on live, then obviously we will be able to answer the questions because, yeah, some of these things are there for you to be able to review it. So jobs in Canada, let's look at it. So here... You've got, we, we'll come back to it. I just want to go through. And here it says, fruit picking jobs in Canada with visa sponsorship. Yeah, to go there with visa. That was uploaded in 26th of October and it's still ongoing, 2022. It's still ongoing. Yeah. And you've got here, it says, University of Toronto Careers, apply now. Yeah, that is for people who are in, in uh, if it doesn't talk about visa sponsorship, if it doesn't talk about visa sponsorship, it means that you cannot apply if you are outside that particular country. If it talks about visa sponsorship, it means that you can apply if you are outside that country. Yeah, so that's the difference. So here, it doesn't talk about any visa sponsorship. It means that you cannot apply for any jobs on there. So what you are looking for is you're looking for jobs that come with visa sponsorship or a skilled worker visa. That means you will be able to qualify and apply. Okay, yeah, let's move on. And here it talks about Canada work visa permit quota 2023 because every government, they, they review the jobs within their country and they make sure that they are giving some of the quota, some of the work to the indigents, to their citizens, as well as people who are outside the country because they don't want to bring a lot of people, lots of people, lots of people. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody says, how do you go to the homepage of that website? You just click on the tab. When you are on the home page, just click on home. Yeah, if we just click on the home page, just go on home. Currently, we are at the jobs 
we have already looked at the home page we've looked at the scholarships now we are on the jobs yeah so just click on the home page click on the home button it will just refresh and then obviously you can see everything on there yeah you can see everything on there so now let's keep on going so canada work visa quota 2023 by canada government so here as i was saying every government they want to reduce or restrict the number of people that are coming into their country yeah most of these countries or all of these countries they are doing so giving skilled worker visa because for people to come there because most of their population they are becoming very old they've got a lot of aging of population and because of the low uh what is the terminology because of the low uh no the high life expectancy that's it because of the high life expectancy most of the people who have retired probably at the age of 60 65 or 67 or 68 depending on the retirement age in the various country the people they retire and they still need to be paid their pension they are not dying <laughs> you understand the people they, they, they they've worked because they've worked as hard from when probably they were 16 17 or 18 and they worked to the retirement and they need to be paid their retirement benefits and because of the high uh what you call it the uh what the terminology i used again because of the high life expectancy the high life higher life expectancy people are not dying they are living longer in their older age and all of that and when they get to the older age as we all know that's where you become weak you become frail and all of that so most of these uh older people and all of that they still need to be paid their pension and who is going to work for them to be paid pension they need fresh blood they need energy into the economy into their system so that's that's where they have opened up on these skilled worker visa opportunity and unfortunately some of us in our countries that we're from in ghana in nigeria south africa and all these other places all these third world countries our governments are doing very poor so uh, a lot of people have got hope in our own country you finish university for two three years for six years seven years and you still haven't landed yourself a job and you will become a burden upon your parents so it's difficult to be able to find jobs. so hence some of these opportunities some of us see it as an opportunity to be able to find some greener pastures for ourselves if you are back home and you are making enough money to be able to cater for yourself and to cater for your family i'm not talking to you i'm talking to people who want to make something meaningful for themselves because where they believe that where they are there is nothing meaningful where they will be able to gain uh, a proper living, a distant standard of living. So that's where all these governments, they've opened up. So they need to get a lot of fresh blood injected in their system, the youth injected in their, what you call economy, so that they will be able to work. And obviously they pay the taxes as they work. And those taxes will be used to pay the aging generation or the older generation who are on benefit, who are on the pension, sorry, who are on pension. pension. So here, that's it says apple picker job with visa sponsorship that's why i said you are looking for a job that comes with visa sponsorship if it doesn't come with visa sponsorship unfortunately and you are outside that particular country you will not be able to apply guys keep power tapping keep power tapping don't stop it we've got over 150 people please keep power tapping keep power tapping keep sharing you know you are benefiting from this so let your brother or sister also benefit from this so now let's go back to the first one he says Canadian visa sponsorship jobs in 2023. We're going to click on there. You can see that this was updated on the 15th of January 2023. It was updated on the 15th of January 2023. So let's click on that. And let's see what happens. Yeah, so when you click on that, this is what happens. It says Canadian visa sponsorship jobs in 2023 work in Canada. So here, as I said, there are a lot of some adverts on there. So just make sure they are not clicking any page uh, that will take you from this particular page. And also every time, as I said, you go and check that you are on the same website. And obviously you check on the padlock on there. Make sure that you are on a secured website. So it doesn't take you to any dodgy, dodgy website. And all of these ones, no company, none of these jobs, will, they will ask, none of them will ask you to pay any money upfront. So if you get any uh, company or any agency that they are asking you to pay any money upfront or some agencies or companies contact you and you know that maybe in the UK 
they spe we spend pounds over here or in Canada, they spend Canadian dollars or in the USA, the US dollars. And they're asking you to pay them in a different currency. You haven't spoken to the person before. You, have, you don't even know where their physical office is. Then straight away, the alarm bells should be ringing. Yeah, because you should be doing your background, just asking for their website, their company's website, asking for who the owner, their physical address. You can go on to Google, you can check in all of that so that you don't fall a victim into the wrong hands. But you should never be paying any upfront fee directly to the company. The only upfront fee that you should be paying is when they have obviously offered you the job, then you are submitting your visa application, then you are submitting the application form, obviously, to the consulate. Or to the mission wherever it is within your country or the nearest where area where you are submitting your information or your forms so now let's go on with this it says the ultimate guide to canadian visa sponsorship jobs each year millions of applicants students and workers move to canada with their families for a better future it goes on to talk about blah 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 yeah so that's not all that we are looking for you scroll down and it brings you to table of contents so table of contents that's where we are interested in it says types of visa sponsorship jobs in canada so you can read about the various sponsorship jobs in canada if you look at the second here one here 1.2 it says companies in canada for visa sponsorship yeah so that's what we want so we click on that yeah so here companies in Can canada for visa sponsorship so here is giving you it's listed the companies in canada that can give you the various visa sponsorship. It says this route is popular and straight. You have to apply for jobs. See, it's giving you the explanation what you have to do. Yeah, that's why I tell you that these websites, they tell you exactly what to do. So when you look for the right information, you get the right information. It tells you exactly what you have to do, what to follow to do. It says the route is this route is very popular. You have to apply for jobs in uh in canadian companies that offer uh visa sponsorship facilities to international students the list of the canadian companies that sponsor uh that sponsor foreign workers is given below so these are companies that sponsor foreign workers i.e if you are not in canada and you are coming from outside canada Visit their website and apply from there. See, it's telling you exactly what to do. If you've just joined and you want the website again, this is the website. It's scholarshipsinformation.info. Scholarshipsinformation.info. So here you can see that it's giving you the list of the companies and it's telling you exactly the steps to follow. Visit the website. So it means it's telling you that you need to get a job first. And these are the companies that can give you a job to come to Canada and work under this particular route. And you visit their website and apply from there. That's what it's telling you. So you go to these companies, their website. These are for skilled. So remember, they are skilled and they are unskilled. This is for Canada. Canada. So Schneider Electric Company Incorporated. You can click on there. You see, you click on there. When it turns into the hand, when the cursor is like that with the arrow, yeah, that's just a normal cursor. When you hover it over the link or over any test and it highlights changes to the hand, it means that when you click it, it's going to take you to another website. Yeah. So when you click on this link, it will take you to the website and you will be on the website of the company and you go and check on their vacancies and all of that. If they've got jobs and you meet the requirements, then you can apply. Yeah. So you can go through the whole lost. So you see that I hovered it on here. This one is not changing. It means that you cannot uh, go on there. Coca-Cola Canada. Yeah. These are all companies on there. Yeah. Google Jobs in Canada, PNH Farming Jobs, KPMG and all of that. So those, all of those jobs are there and it tells you exactly what to do. And number two, it says unskilled jobs in Canada with visa sponsorship. As I said, you need to be looking, if you are outside Canada, you need to be looking for jobs with visa sponsorship. So here it says that the unskilled is another way of moving to Canada that has very less qualifications. So if you are somebody who hasn't gotten any higher qualifications or uh, less qualifications, then this is the route for you that you might be looking at. I normally talk about travel to the UK, but I chanced on this information, I think about two, three, uh, about a couple of 
uh, weeks ago. And obviously, I knew that a lot of people were asking me about other countries, other countries, because I was always talking about UK, UK, UK. And sometimes, especially for the unskilled jobs in the UK, there is only a few of them. Yeah, most of them are for people who are already here. So when I came across this, I thought it would be better for me to start, obviously, educating people, especially uh, where they want other opportunities to go to other countries and not just, obviously, the UK, especially if you don't meet the requirements in coming to the UK. So here it says jobs in unskilled uh, includes farm work jobs in Canada. Yeah, you're going to be working on the farms, fruit picking jobs and truck driver jobs as well. So all those people who say who comes to me and ask me questions about uh, truck driving, truck driving, truck driving. Yeah. So that's where you go. So if you are interested in uh, a truck driving role or truck driving job opportunity that's that for you yeah so you can click on uh go on to the their website which you're going to be looking at later and obviously you can go and search for the information you can go and search for that information and it's giving you information about what uh jobs that qualify you for the unskilled worker they say find unskilled worker jobs in canada with visa sponsorship today if you are looking for an unskilled job in canada uh, pardon me i'm just reading it from there for the benefit of uh yeah I, just to explain or just to let you know that all the information they're telling you exactly what to do the step-by-step -step approach that you need to go through that you need to follow thanks uh if people can just uh copy the link and just keep posting it in the comment section for me i'll be very much appreciated yeah so I know a few people have done that. <clears throat> it's uh, scholarshipscanada.info. 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 So if you follow it systematically, you know that you cannot go wrong because, <clears throat> excuse me, it tells you exactly what to do. It tells you exactly what to do. So it says some unskilled jobs to apply for. So here, when you click on here, it takes you directly to their website. See, it's no brainer at all. So general farm worker jobs with visa sponsorship in Canada, 2023. Fruit picking jobs in Canada with visa sponsorship. Yeah, Canada Job Bank. Yeah, you click on the farm worker type. It tells you farm worker. Yeah. And a lot of people comes onto my website, uh, my live, and they ask me questions about, ah, I'm a chef, I work in a restaurant, I work do this, I do that. Here is giving you restaurant jobs in Canada with, spo with their sponsorship. Can you believe it? Yeah. So search ones in the guys, search jobs in the UK, you cannot get the visa sponsorship if you work in a restaurant, unless in very rare cases, maybe you cook continental and all of those dishes. But here, if they've listed what you can do it, you can get it from wherever you are. Yeah, it says this can be done through a temporary foreign worker program. You can find a lot of restaurant jobs such as cook, chef and manager type of jobs on the Canadian Job Bank website. Yeah, Canadian. So that is the Job Bank website, Canada Job Bank. If we click on there, then that will take you to the Canada Job Bank, Canada Job Bank. Yeah, sorry. So here it says, visit Canada, Job Bank Canada to find restaurant. So here you see that all the information is all being summarized, is all being condensed and put in a very simple uh, location for you. It says IT software jobs in Canada with visa sponsorship. So if you work in IT and all of that, that is uh, also for you as well. And it tells you which IT skill is in demand in Canada. It's giving you explanation. So if you know that you're doing any of these jobs, you are a software engineer, you are a developer, you are a database architect or administrator, you are a system analyst, project manager. Additionally, if you are a data scientist or analyst, professionals are needed to support the increasing digital transformation, uh, what you call it, of business businesses. So that is just as straightforward. Yeah, and it's giving you more information to whet your appetite. It says, what is an entry-level IT job salary in Canada? An average entry-level IT job salary in Canada is 84000 Canadian dollars per year. Can you believe that? That is just an entry-level IT role. Yeah. 
So some additional benefits, Canadian companies sponsoring visa require, uh, visa applications. So if you were getting, these are some of the benefits that you'll get. Employer paid health insurance with retirement plans and other pegs like relocation assistance. They will help you to relocate to wherever you are and obviously to Canada to go and uh, work because especially if you don't know somebody over there and all of that, most of those companies will just help you. And it's giving you a lot more information about that as well. And it's giving you IT companies within Canada that you can search for. And also the nanny or caregiver jobs in Canada, if you want to be a nanny or caregiver jobs in Canada, over 200,000 families in Canada uh, appointed nannies and caregivers for their kids. So there's a lot of opportunity in over there. And it tells you how to apply for caregiver job. Yeah, you go to that website and that website, that's where you need to go to to find a caregiver jobs if you want to be a carer. And you see, it says, what is it giving you an age limit? For nannies in Canada, 22 to 49. Yeah, so it gives you all the information. Yeah, and it gives goes on to talk about Canadian Canada sponsor visa processing time. It tells you that when you submit an application, how long it's supposed to take you. And here, some applications may take as little as six to eight weeks, while others may take several months. So now it's giving you a bit of uh, what you call it, an estimated time, lead time when you submit an application, how long it's going to take it for you to be for it to be processed. Yeah. How do I find a company willing to sponsor my visa in Canada? Yeah. It says there are several ways to find employers willing to find to sponsor your visa, such as searching online job sites and researching employers that offer foreign work permits. You can also visit jobs in Canada category to find all Canadian visa sponsorship jobs in 2023. So when you pay, when you pay a connection man or you pay an agency, this is all that they come to do. Yeah, you can pay an agency. Yeah, eighty. Uh, what do you call it? Eight thousand dollars, or uh, ten thousand, or fifteen thousand, and all of that. That this is what they come to do. They come and look for this information that I'm sharing with you, and they go and look for the jobs. They apply for the jobs, and maybe they contact the employer. And the employer says, "Okay, yes, I'm going to give you the job. I've got these vacancies for you." All that they do is go and find people, and they get the sponsorship for the <laughs> from the employer, and they will come and sell it to you. For ten thousand, yeah. For fifteen thousand, for uh seven thousand, for eight thousand, and all of that. That's all they do. Meanwhile, the information is there for you to see it. Yeah. So guys, uh, you need to spend some time. We need to. I know. Yeah, yeah. Once you spend some time, if you cannot read and understand, then obviously get somebody else who can read and understand, and they can help you to be able to go through the process. So the process, as you can see, is just explain everything and even how much, how long it's going to take you to apply and obviously uh, what to expect. You can go through all the other areas as well. All that we talked about, IT, language, everything you need to know about caregiver jobs, we went through the whole of this. So that's the table of contents that we went through. So if you go all the way up again, then yeah, it will take you to, you can click on the next tab if you are looking for internships yeah study and work visa process let's go on to that one there because well, that's what i know a lot of people are here for yeah so study and work visa process so here again is giving you loads and loads and loads of countries yeah it's giving you loads and loads and loads of countries so now again let me share the website yeah it's scholarshipscanada.info it doesn't mean it's only for scala uh, canada as you can see, it's for a lot of other countries as well. And always check for that padlock on there just to make sure that you are on a secure, you are on a secure website. Okay, so study and work visa process. So on here, it says France work visa process 2023, how to apply. So if you fancy going to France, then obviously you can check that out. If you fancy going to UAE, you can check that out. That's what most uh, people, uh, connection men and all of that, they do to our beloved brothers and sisters from Ghana. They go and do, they say, uh, visa before you pay and all of that. They take you all those huge sums of money and they just, uh, what do you call it, take you there. And you go and enter into contracts for like two years and all of that. And obviously, be mindful that they are the middlemen. So they have to take their cut as well. They have to take their cut as well.
okay so new zealand yeah work visa process so you click on there guys let's keep our tapping we've got over 170 people if everybody is sending 200 likes guys otherwise we 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 would need, we need to stop if you want me to stop guys please we've got over 200 uh, over 175 people if everybody is sending at least 100 or 200 likes just keep power tapping on your screen anywhere on your screen you know it's benefiting you let your brother or sister also benefit it otherwise when i finish this all that they're coming to do is come into my dm and start asking me exactly the same questions with the information that i'm sharing so i don't want anybody else to miss out on this information so if you are not gifting if you are not uh what you call a gifting you're not sending any gifts or anything which i'm not asking for but just make sure that obviously you are sharing it you are liking it if you want to share it since we've been doing this only 68 people have shared it only 68 shares if you want to share it touch your screen and hold it down for three to four seconds your friend list will open below then invite new friends invite new friends every one minute you can invite new set of friends every one minute invite new set of friends every one minute invite new set of friends so that other people also join and they decide whether they want to benefit from it or not yeah so that's what we're talking about so here uae if you are interested in that process as well you can check that out new zealand work visa uh process okay let's check in the it says lead to residence so yeah it is going to lead to residence so here let's click on new zealand and see what we're going to find on there yeah so that is the process that explains everything on there yeah it tells you from uh, 1st of April, the minimum wage in New Zealand is $21, uh, $21.20 20 per hour, which is pretty excellent. So you are, that's an hourly rate. That is the minimum wage. That's the, which means people, a lot of people earn more than that. But that is the lowest that you can earn per hour in New Zealand. And here again, it takes you through the table of contents, just like what we did for just like what we do for Canada. So it says New Zealand work types who needs a uh, work visa for New Zealand. Choosing the right work visa for New Zealand. A New Zealand work visa processing time. Application fee. So here you see it tells you everything. So now let's look at some of the information. Essential skills. So it tells you some of the essential skills visa. So some of the visas that you can get working holiday visa for new zealand and it said the essential skills can be valid up to five years uh work to resident visa yeah you can get that as well silver fan job search criteria yeah you can go through uh that process as well who needs a work visa for new zealand here it tells you to work in new zealand as a non-citizen or non-permanent resident of either new zealand or australia Obtaining a, a work visa is a mandatory requirement. So obviously, if you are not living in New Zealand and you're coming from outside, then you need a working visa, just like the UK, USA and any other country. You need to have the right to work in the country before you can go and live there and work. Yeah. So it tells you about to be eligible for a work visa in New Zealand. You must either is giving you the criteria. So if you don't meet any of these criteria, then it says possess a job offer. So that's you must possess a job offer from a New Zealand employer, be traveling for a specific work related purpose or event, have a partner residing in New Zealand and seek to join them for work purposes, be a citizen of a country with special work scheme agreements with New Zealand, have completed your studies in New Zealand and seek to work in the country. So it means that if you do not meet the requirement for the last four bullet points at least you should meet the first one which is almost similar or the same for every other country as the uk usa canada australia and all of that you need to have a job offer that's you need to be offered a job from a company in the host country before obviously you when you go straight over there then it means that you've got a job that is available for you to be able to go to so it's giving you the conditions. So you need to make sure that you meet one of those requirements. And it says there are more than 80 visas that let you work in New Zealand. So there are loads of them. Then you can click on here, explore visa options to work in. So it's not just the UK. It's got loads and loads and loads of other countries. So it says application fee for New Zealand work visa. So here, guys, see, 
nothing is hidden it's told it's, it's telling you everything you can pay the work visa fee for new zealand through credit card or debit card online the fee is different and depends on the country from where you are applying the normal visa fee uh for new zealand is 150 dollars yeah 150 dollars so for u.s citizens no application fee so if we're in the u.s no application fee and that obviously that is the exemption yeah so that information is there so $750. So if somebody is going to charge you, it says, that, oh, okay, I've got a sponsorship uh, visa job in New Zealand and you need to pay 5000 or 10000 before you can get a skilled worker visa. They've just come to this website or maybe go to other website or maybe other platforms. They found a job. They've contacted the employer. They've been offered the job. And now they come to you and they say, okay, you need to pay me uh Ten thousand or seven thousand or twelve thousand for me to help you with the process, and guess how much they're going to spend? They're going to spend about just seven hundred and fifty dollars, and they've charged you ten thousand or twelve thousand. So, <laughs> uh, guess the difference. So that's why, obviously, I decided to start doing this. Uh, yeah, to be able to uh, what you call it, educate our brothers, to be able to inform our brothers and sisters uh, in the. Uh, both are outside the UK, uh, living back home in Africa and other places, yeah, to be able to get obviously the information and the knowledge to be able to do it. And it also goes on to tell you about finding and applying for jobs in New Zealand. Yeah, guys, I've seen a lot of people typing saying that they want in the UK and all of that. We're going to talk about that. But yeah, let me highlight all the other areas because there are a lot of other opportunities in other countries that people especially people who are not skilled might not be able to get in the UK. So it's not traveling. It's not just about the UK. It's about all other places as well. And all these developed countries, if you are able to get visas to go there, you can be able to try. And here it says, visit here to apply for New Zealand work visa in 2023. Yeah. So when you just click on there, it takes you to the page. Then you can apply it yourself. Yeah. So it's everything is just straightforward. You just have to follow the process. If you follow the process, you read it and you understand it. Yeah, interested in Canada? If you are interested in Canada, go to that same website. Yeah, uh, let's scroll all the way up. Yeah, we're going to be... Let's go back to the next page where we were on. Yeah, so study and work visa process. That's what we're looking at. So France we went to New Zealand. So the person was just talking about Canada visa requirements. We've already talked about it. So you can click on there. You can click on there and it take you to the website for Canada. Germany, work visa requirements. If you are interested in going to Germany, say a step-by-step -step guide. Yeah, but obviously Germany, some of the language is written both in English and also in, uh, in Dutch land or whatever their language is in Dutch. Yeah. And uh, best citizenship by investment in 2023 to read your second passport. It gives you a lot of information on the Australia. See, you've got Australia as well. So if you fancy going to Australia, you can go on the nominated visa 2023. It says without experience, without experience. That yeah, If you haven't got any experience and you want to go to Australia, that is a website that you need to be on. Yeah five easy canada permanent resident process so here canada is one of the few countries that you can apply to get a permanent residency before you even arrive in the country so instead of giving you a visa they will give you a permanent residence yeah before you arrive in the country but obviously it depends on the uh the job that you're going to do over there that will determine uh, Belgium as well. So if you fancy going to Belgium, you can go on here and you can follow the process. Singapore, you can go on here and follow the process. Guys, if you've joined, please follow the page for us. Follow the page for us. Share it. We've got over 170 people. Let's keep power tapping, guys. Power tap, power tap, power tap, power tap, power tap. I'm going to stop until everybody is power tapping so I can take some rest. Guys, let's power tap. If you want to power tap, it's just a matter of just tapping on your screen just tapping on your anywhere on your screen keep tapping keep tapping until the pink hat appears the pink hat appears on your on the icon on the on the picture on the top left hand corner 
and when the pink heart appears don't stop please keep power tapping please keep power tapping please keep power tapping until the red the pink heart is full it starts moving towards to the right and until it is full god richly bless you all those who are power tapping it means you are not being selfish you are sharing with your friends so that your friends can also see it your brothers and sisters can also see it so they can also benefit from it you you are sharing with them so they can see it and they can also uh benefit from it guys keep our tapping we've got over 180 people yeah let's get the likes to 50k let's get the likes to 50k let's get the likes to 50k power tap share with your friends if you want to share it all you need to do you touch your screen and you hold it down for three to four seconds your friend list will open below then you send it to your friends you send it, the invitation to your friends if you are interested in the website again you want to screenshot it this is the website is scholarshipscanada.info scholarshipscanada.info guys please write it down and uh write it down write it down or screenshot it that is where you need to go to and that is the website that is the website for you okay now let's go through it yeah we are almost come on come on let's keep our tapping we are almost there let's get to 50k come on under a minute if we've got 180 people if everybody's power tapping then we can continue everybody is sending at least 200 likes then we can continue let's get to 50k let's get to 50k now if everybody sent 200 likes 180 people multiply you're gonna hit 50k and other people are gonna get notified and they can join as well the site name please again that is the name of the site somebody is asking for the site name is scholarships canada scholarships canada dot info scholarships canada dot info scholarships canada dot info that is the name of the website that is the name of the website so belgium that is the process yeah that you can go uh, you can go there and check it singapore that is the process that you guys keep power tapping don't stop don't keep it to yourself share with your friends share with your brothers and sisters let them also benefit so if you fancy going to singapore that is the process uh portugal yeah portugal is also there Australian, this is our summer jobs. So if you fancy going to Australia, uh, what you call it this summer, uh, to do farming jobs, that is also there. Uh, types of uh, Canada work permits, as explained over there. If you fancy going to Italy, that also has been explained over there. Let's go to the right hand side, Finland. If you want to go to Finland, that is also there. If you want to go to Austria, that is also there. Japan, that is there. Norway, that is there. UK, somebody asked about UK. So let's check the UK process. Okay, this is seasonal work. The seasonal work, at the beginning of this year, the UK government has allocated, uh, I think, some places, uh, over 30,000 30, spaces for them to be able to grant seasonal workers so the seasonal workers you come here on a temporary worker visa on a temporary worker visa to be able to work so here uk seasonal work and most of the time you can work up to uh what you call it 15 up to no sorry up to six months so if we read this it says that all you need to know about the UK Seasonal Work Visa 2023. If you want to work in the UK temporarily, you need to apply for a UK Seasonal Visa before 15th of November 2023. So if you want to make application, it needs to go in now. To apply, apply for a Seasonal Visa, you need to apply for UK Seasonal Visa jobs. You must apply online for Seasonal Work Visa. In this post, we will tell you about the Seasonal Application process and how to secure a job. This is an easy work visa to get in the UK. So it tells you it is an easy work visa to get in the UK. Yeah. So if you follow the process, it's just as easy as ABC. It says the UK has a seasonal work program that provides temporary employment opportunities to foreigners in horticulture. Yeah. In horticulture, poultry, farm work, fruit picking and other related sectors. 
yeah horticulture poultry farm uh, so here if you are somebody who hasn't got gotten any uh qualifications or any gotten any highly skilled individual we'll look at the high the, the ones for the highly skilled individuals as well in this post we will tell you how you can get a uk seasonal work visa so here it takes you through the process where you can work under a uk seasonal work visa benefits and package how long you can stay in the uk when you can apply the processing time when you submit your application the uk uk seasonal work visa cost so it tells you how much it's going to cost eligibility requirements for the uk so now let's probably look at some of some of the important things uh let's say processing time so say if you have to apply for a seasonal work visa online this visa process takes three weeks see it is tell, it's telling you what exactly how long it's going to take yeah uh usa i think there is usa on here so if somebody's asking do you have usa uh if you go to that website if you go to the website yeah you can go and check that for yourself the person asking about usa i believe that usa is on there so scholarships canada info scholarships canada info all that you have to go through is just follow the tabs and it's easy for you to be able to find out i'm just going through it so that people become familiarized with how to be able to go through the visa uh, the page and how to be able to browse through it so you kind of uh, understand the process and how to be able to look for the information you know which uh, link to uh, click on and which link not to click on because there are some ads on there you don't want to click on the ad otherwise it will take you to a different page so yeah okay it tells you that it's going to take three weeks to process that it says uk seasonal work visa cost it's going to take cost you 259 pounds yeah 259 pounds so if somebody comes and say that okay they are charging you uh, <laughs> uh five thousand or three thousand or seven thousand to help you to get a seasonal worker visa to come to the uk you should know that <laughs> obviously they are trying to uh they are trying to use nine to try you six yeah but the six is probably done or nine and i'll deny but done six so you just have to be you just have to be uh, open uh, open minded you have to do your research and it tells you exactly how much it's going to cost on there and it says eligibility requirements for uk seasonal work visa you must be 18 that's the legal age that you're an adult when you apply a certificate of sponsorship reference number from the uk sponsor that is the company in the uk that is giving you the work they should give you that certificate of sponsorship yeah somebody's asking about holland just go to the website go to the website and just go and check on the tabs you'll find uh what you call it, all the relevant countries so scholarships canada.info i don't know why a lot of people keep asking exactly the same question even though you've answered it so if you want to find out go to the website you can check for any country if the country is on there you will find the information yeah so it tells you exactly what you need to apply you have to apply for seasonal jobs in the uk and get an offer letter and then apply for a seasonal work visa so you need that job yeah from the uk sponsor which is a company registered in the uk to give you a sponsorship once you've gotten the job they will give you an offer letter and use that offer letter to go and apply for your visa simple your visa will give you certificate of sponsorship reference now your sponsor will give you uh your certificate of sponsorship reference number yeah that's what they've got and they'll give you and you need a valid passport obviously you want to travel so you need a valid passport required money to support so here you must have at least 1200 in your bank account to show you can support yourself but sometimes some of the sponsors if you get a very good sponsor they might be able to support you with this maybe they might split it into half half 600 or 600 or so and they will help you to be able to uh, obtain your visa and it goes on to give you uk seasonal visa sponsorship companies look at the company it just listed it on there so all you need to do is just copy this link and you put it copy this uh, url and you put it into google and it will just take you to the website then you can apply easy 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 as that it cannot be any easier than that can it yeah so don't let please don't let anybody charge you thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds guys we've stopped power tapping 
please keep on power tapping please keep on power tapping if you want to power tap all you need to do is just keep tapping on your screen just keep tapping on your screen tapping on your screen when you tap on your screen keep tapping on your screen sending the likes that's what we mean by the power tap it's just if that is your screen just keep tapping on it just keep tapping on it anywhere on your screen like so until you see a pink hat appear on the profile picture until you see a pink hat appear on the profile picture once the pink hat appears on the profile picture don't stop there still keep power tapping still keep power tapping still keep power tapping until you see the pink hat moving towards the right keeps moving over the right still keep power tapping and you see that the pink hat is full the pink hat is full when the pink hat is full you see a confetti explosion yeah you see a confetti on your page and that means you are doing the most you are helping others to be able to see it you are helping others to be able to see the page and they can also benefit from it and all those who are not sharing please share it for us please share it for us if you're on the page please if you want to share it you touch on your screen you hold it for about three seconds your friend list will open below then obviously send the uh send the invite don't invite the same friends you invited previously invite new set of friends so other new people can also join once you've sent it to at least about 20 or 30 you've shared it with 20 or 30 of your friends come back on your screen and keep power tapping keep power tapping away keep power tapping away uh thanks to all those who are power tapping yeah thanks to all those who are power tapping so here these are the work uh the links for the seasonal jobs all you need to do is just copy this link and you put it into a browser or you put it into google and it will just take you to the website and you search for seasonal work and you just apply yeah so that's it and here it tells you about more seasonal jobs in the uk these are careers adas careers farmers weekly farmers guardian national trust jobs scottish farmer and how much do seasonal workers get paid in the uk so if you come as a seasonal worker as i said it will allow you to work in the uk for up to six months and you will have to find sometimes if you are lucky it might be extended if it doesn't get extended it means you might have to find another route of try if you want to still stay in the uk and work find a different sponsor otherwise if you don't get you might become illegal and you have to go back home before your visa expires otherwise if you wait till it expires it becomes difficult for you when you are looking to come back into the country next time so here it says the average wage for a seasonal worker in the uk is up to 10 to 15 pound per hour check that 10 to 15 but obviously these are before taxes 10 to 15 pound per hour and some of these people can work because they are coming here for just seasonal work uh some uh, there some of them can work up to about 10 hours a day maybe 12 hours a day nine hours a day normally between nine to ten hours or even 12 hours a day yeah because they make enough money enough cash in their pocket and they can go back home then yeah sort themselves or after that they can decide that they want to stay here yeah and we've already talked about how much it costs you to apply for the seasonal work visa 259 pounds yeah so now let's go back to all the way to the top again so if you want to go all the way to the top again that is the website yeah scholarshipscanada.info we click on the back button yeah you click on the back button let's go back again because we went yeah so it brings us to the normal screen yeah where we were before where it was talking about steady and work visa steady and work visa let me get it a bit closer so you can see it so here let's go through this so japan austria uk seasonal work how to get we've already talked about canada uh, somebody was asking about amsterdam that's netherlands or holland so the person who was asking about netherlands or holland in the comment section that is the website that you have to go to yeah if we click on there then you can follow all the information uae if you want to go to the uae a lot of people are brothers and sisters are paying loads of money to go and do loads of other work but they can apply they didn't know that they could apply themselves yeah but i know a lot of uae people who are looking to come to europe so 
probably that might not be the best place for you yeah except maybe you are doing a highly skilled job or you are going there as an expatriate then i know that most of those people get paid a lot of money but if you are going there to go and do cleaner work or go and do housework or maybe work in a restaurant or in a factory and you are not probably like uh, a manager or you're not going there as an expert trade so i know that most of such people are probably looking to other going to other countries to the uk usa canada or any other part of europe and uh, to come and seek greener pastures malta so canada holiday visa malta as well argentina if you fancy you want to go and meet uh messi then yeah <laughs> you can you can go on there so those are uh, what you call it the the study and work visa the processes and here if you can you go on here it gives you more information about study programs in canada okay let me probably check one other country the last time we looked at uh let me check austria okay So when you go on there if you just click on it you see that it just opens for you so it's very very friendly it's very very friendly so austria work visa process so here as i was saying if you are somebody who wants to travel and because most of these other countries they accept some people who are unskilled if you are unskilled i.e you haven't got any tertiary education or you haven't gotten any uh what you call it any higher uh, degree or masters or anything of that sort but you are uh, what you call it you are even though they are skilled but they still refer to most of those trades as are unskilled they're unskilled it's just doing the farm jobs and all of that but if you are skilled or you are in between you've got these technical skills and all of the vocational skills carpenter technicians countries like this or your driver they've got opportunities uh for such people yeah so here you can the last time i think i went through a few of those so here let's say uh what should i look for do, 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 do. it says uh secure a job in austria let's probably click on that how to secure a job in austria yeah so here it talks it talks about how much you can earn yeah average salary in austria for workers it says workers can earn up to two thousand or three thousand euros per month in austria overall austria is known for having a high standard of living and salaries that are competitive yeah so it gives a lot more about information about the country as well austria work visa requirements so here it explains about uh, what you need for applying a work visa you need a statement from the employer that is i.e the company that is looking to give you the job your professional qualifications your research proposal that's if you're going to do a research work or you're going as a student <clears throat> language skills you need to be able to demonstrate at least you can speak their language or maybe the english language if that was the preference uh if you've got your own trademark then obviously you've registered it or you've painted it or your own product uh previous salary the job that you were doing how much you're already earning there a position and your company status and if you are looking to study in australia and habilitation and also employment contract it also talks you through what the application fee how much it is going to cost so job visa 150 euros and they've got this kind of red white red card it says application fee is 120 the granting is uh, 20 and the cost of personalization i.e to do your biometrics and all of that fingerprints scan of photography and signature that is also 20 euros as well so it gives you all the information and everything about it so you know that all none of these visa processes or applications is going to cost you five thousand or the six thousand or ten thousand that people uh somebody says i'm not educated but have skills please can you help me Th this is the help i that is one comment that i don't i don't know you've come on a page we are sharing the information 
and you are asking, you are still typing in there, please, can you help me? This is the help that I'm giving. I'm giving you the information and I'm telling you, I'm explaining to you what to be able to do and what processes to follow to be able to get the information. Yeah. And you are still typing in there. Please, can you help me? I don't know what help you expect me to be able to do. You expect me to probably come to wherever you are and hold you by the hand and drag you and bring you here. That is definitely not impossible. So guys, that is the website. Those asking about our website again is scholarshipscanada.info scholarshipscanada.info so guys this is the help that we are giving showing you where to go and find the information yeah and once you find the information make sure that you read and research it just like i'm going through with you systematically and how to be able to navigate through the various pages look for the various or the relevant information then uh, if you've just joined unfortunately you've joined a bit late you've been doing this for uh, almost three hours now so what you want to do is probably you want to i'm going to upload it later you probably want to go to my youtube page my youtube channel and subscribe to it or follow it so immediately i upload it later today or probably tomorrow you will get a notification and you can go and watch it from the very beginning uh, my youtube channel is the same name here dr lawrence samoa dr lawrence samoa if you enter it into youtube you'll find me then obviously you can follow me. Make sure that you are subscribing to my page. So when I upload it, then you will be able to find it. Then, uh, yeah, you can watch it in case you've just joined and you joined a little bit late. That's my YouTube channel, at Dr. Lawrence Amor. At Dr. Lawrence Amor. It's the same name that I've got here. Then you can follow me, subscribe to it as well. Then when I upload it, then you can catch up from the beginning. Uh, yo, yo, no. Thanks very much for spamming the roses. Very much appreciated. Very much appreciated. Guys, uh, my top gifters, please make sure that you are following them for us because they are also supporting us. And all those who are sharing it, God Richard bless you. Those who are not sharing it, those who are not liking it, who are not power tapping, you know yourself. You know yourself. <laughs> okay okay yeah it's all good it's all good so yeah now let's go through it so guys this is the information this is the help this is the help that we are giving this is the help that we are giving oh uh you don't know yeah thanks very much thanks very much much appreciated too thanks very much for all your support and everything guys keep power tapping keep power tapping let's get the likes to let's set a new target 100k yeah hundred thousand we are on 59 so let's get to hundred thousand within like 10 minutes we can we are over 220 220 people if everybody is sending at least 100 or 200 likes 100 to 200 likes if we keep power tapping everybody is just keep tapping on your screen constantly keep tapping on your screen other people who are not tapping on your screen please also share it you want to share it touch on your screen and hold it touch it sensitively you touch it like that yeah like my thumb you touch it and you hold it your friend list will open below then you invite at least 20 to 30 friends invite a new set of friends every two three minutes once you've done that you will see that uh what you call it the numbers are growing and other people also can join as well so here let's go back to this one here it says secure job in austria it's giving you some of the websites that you can go to look for uh what you call it jobs so it's just a matter of just going to that particular company's website copy it and put it into a url or if it's got a link like this, then obviously you can click it on the link directly and it will take you to the company's website where you can apply. You can apply directly. Okay, yeah. Good, good, good. So here, when you get to that page over there, it says visit here to apply for Austria work visa. So you see, it's just straightforward. And here it gives on information, Austria work visa processing time. It can take up to eight weeks. So when you submit your application and you don't hear from them, give yourself some time because they're already telling you that it can take up to eight weeks work visa of uh, austria validity the work visa in austria lasts for two years so it's told you how long it's going to take for two years so when you're there and you know that your visa is coming to expire then obviously you have to look for other avenues to try and renew it we really have to give credit to the one who puts all these to the website though yeah yeah that's why uh, obviously that that is very very good yeah i don't know whether you are the one who put all of that on the website so that's why obviously 
I'm constantly referring to it for people who put all of that information together. You are right. Yeah. Yeah, that is very, very good. So we need that's why we are sharing this information with you. So we need to. So my brother, who was that who made that comment? Yeah, Prizzy. Yeah, Prizzy, you are right. We really need to have we really have to give credit to the one who put all the these to the website though. Yeah, you are right. I don't disagree with you. I am very much in support with that. That is a good work that they've done because they've gone to every country's website, every country's government website and the pages and all of that. And they've just collated all the information and put it into a single page or a single document. And it's constantly being updated. Anyone, anytime there are changes, they also change it as well. So yeah, I don't deserve the credit because I'm just explaining the information that is on there. So instead of probably having about 50 or 100 different countries websites or maybe 20 different countries websites and just go in there and it's trying to explain everything moving from website to website they have just compiled collated this into a single page into a single document and obviously that is very very good as well so yeah uh, Prizzy you are very right you are very right in that they've done a very very good and a very very great job yeah The dog, he's tripe. Uh, I know him. They are in group. <laughs> you know him. What's the name of the person? Kojo, Kojo Richie. Is that you? Did you put all of that together? <laughs> yeah, somebody is saying the website. This is the website. It's scholarship, scholarshipscanada.info. Scholarshipscanada.info. That is the website. Yeah, scholarshipscanada.info. So, yeah, so the information, as I said, is very, very good. And I don't disagree with the comments that people are coming below. So as you go in there, we've already talked about this. France, Finland, UAE, Canada, work visa. And, uh, yeah, you can find all the information. Once you've done that, again, you can go all the way to the top. You can click on the home button again. Then it just refreshes everything. Yeah, it just refreshes everything. It just refreshes everything. Yeah, it just refreshes everything. Then you can check on the various, you can go onto the website of the various countries and also companies and yeah. So you can find scholarships as we can see on the home. You can find work visa. You can find scholarship for students. You can find jobs, skilled worker visas and uh and also all for the other countries you see the flags and everything there they all uh, tells you about which country or which companies that have got uh, openings on there and you can go and find that out and uh for yourself yeah and earlier on i went and talk about the uk this is website is for the uk only so if you're looking for opportunities to come to the uk this is for the uk only the website that we're looking at scholarshipscanada.info that is for every uh, in uh, every other country else that they have got opportunities yeah, you know thanks very much thanks very much for that and when i talked about my youtube channel where i'm going to be uploading the video so yeah is uh the same name dr lauren somewhere you can go on there and you can uh what you call it follow the page so here as well, let me talk a, a little bit. Maybe there might be some teachers. There might be some teachers in here. The qualified teacher status, if you are looking to come to the UK to teach, qualified teacher status is still open for teachers who are looking to come to the UK. So here, if you are, want to teach in the UK, you go to the UK government website. Yeah. Or if you are looking for a skilled worker visa to come to the UK, student visa to come to the uk any type of visa that you need to come to the uk at all you go to the uk government website is www.gov.uk that is the main uk government website once you go onto that website and you are on the search engine this is the search engine on the website so you click on that uh magnifying glass over there yeah you get this for information you get to here 
where the cursor is blinking you can search anything that you want on there so if you just enter on the uh, qualify qualify teacher status yeah so when you click on there it will give you loads of information loads of results so here qualified teacher status so that is this one here it says qualified to teach in england so if you are a teacher and you are looking for that information then you can just click on there yeah that's how to find information on this website and you find any information that you need on that particular website you will find every information that you need on that particular website yeah that is a qualified teacher status you can read about the requirements teachers who train in england teachers who train in wales teachers training recognized in northern uh northern Ireland and scotland teachers who trained outside the uk that's if you're outside the uk then that's the link for you to click on there and go and read about it etc etc if also you want to know about uh what you call it visitor visa is the same website again so you can go on there and just type in the visitor visa and just click on search yeah and the same thing as well it comes up with all the information check if you need a uk visa yeah visit the uk as a standard visitor yeah and it will take you through all the requirements visit to study that if you want to come here as a student visit as an academic yeah visit on a business yeah if you are under 18 apply visit for medical reasons apply for a standard visa and uh when you can extend your stay while you're in the uk so all the information and everything is within that particular this website for if you are looking for any information about how to visit the uk yeah to get any type of visa is www.gov.uk that should be the website the website for you yeah so here if you are looking for a skilled worker visa as well you can enter in the skilled worker visa so when you enter in there in the search it gives you the results then it says check if you need a skilled worker visa and if you scroll down it's giving you the explanation of a skilled worker visa basically an overview over there yeah the job yeah knowledge of english it's giving you all the, the the documents that you need to apply yeah how much it will cost so okay i've look, done this before but let me just click on there so we will just quickly look at some of the overview so skilled worker visa in the uk so knowledge of english that's where you require the english language exams here okay like let's start from this one here if you work in healthcare or education so they've got a special visa that is healthcare and education the, the uh, visa for them uh knowledge of english you need to be able to demonstrate it any job that you're going to come to the uk to come and do if you are on a skilled worker visa route unless you are dependent then you don't need it but if you're on a skilled worker visa route then obviously uh you you will need it as well so here then uh, knowledge of english how much it costs yeah so let's say click on how much it's going to cost you if you want to learn about it about it so here it gives you a breakdown of how much it's going to cost you if you want to apply for a skilled worker visa to come to the uk so here it says that you pay the application fee the standard fee ranges from 625 pound to 1423 depending on what type of visa that you're applying for pay the health Care surcharge this is usually 624 pounds per year that's every year uh you have to pay that that's so that you can get your free uh nhs yeah you can go to if you are sick or you are ill or you're on wow 
then you can get your free NHS that is kind of health insurance. And uh, you need at least about 1,270 available unless you are exempt because sometimes if you are lucky, your employer or your sponsor might be able to uh, support you with that as well. Yeah, so it's giving you some of the fees that you'll be likely, you'll be uh, what you call it supposed to pay and it's giving you some breakdown, some example of breakdown on here. Yeah. And it says if your job is on the shortage occupation list, so if you want to find a shortage occupation list, that means that, yeah, there is a list within the UK, which means that that will qualify you for a skilled worker visa. So if you need to check this, it means that you will be able to come here on a skilled worker visa to apply. So you can click on the shortage occupation list and it will take you to the page where you can remove, we can review all the occupations and everything on there and check whether your job is on there. If your job is on there, all you need is a occupation code, which is a four digit number. Uh, so let's see if we can find the shortage occupation list. So here, so see when you click on any link, it just takes you to another link where you can see all of it. So these are the jobs in the UK that are in shortage. So healthcare services are public healthcare managers, and this is the occupation code. Once you find that your job is on here, this occupation code is very important for you to be able to write it down. Yeah, that occupation code is very important. People keep asking, what's the name of the site? What's the name of the site? The name of the site is www.gov.uk. www.gov.uk. That is the name of the website. Yeah. Okay, so that is the list of all the shortage occupations in the UK. So it means that if you've got any of these professions, then you meet the requirements of a skilled worker visa. Yeah, you meet the requirements of a skilled worker visa. Yeah, civil engineers, all jobs, mechanical engineers. So if you find a job on there, you need to write this occupation code down. Then after that, you need to go and start looking for an employer that can give you in the UK, which is registered uh, and has got a COS certificate of sponsorship that can give you a job to come and work in the UK. Yeah, so that is the the process for, but obviously a lot more people nowadays find the healthcare or the care worker route as the easy process. So most people are coming here using that particular route. Yeah, if you just joined, I'm going to be uploading this video uh, later on my YouTube page. So you want to write my YouTube page down. It's the same name I've got here, Dr. Lauren Samoa, Dr. Lauren Samoa. Yeah, that is my YouTube page, Dr. Lauren Samoa. And uh, uh, once you go on there, you can subscribe to it for us. When I upload the video, then you'll be able to see it because we've been doing it for over three hours now. Guys, keep power tapping, keep power tapping. See that our numbers has dropped significantly. Keep power tapping and let more people get notified and they can join as well if they want to. So that is a shortage occupation list. You can just keep going through it. See that there are loads and loads and loads of jobs on there. Loads and loads and loads of jobs. Yeah, just go through it. So now if you want to go back, then obviously it's just a matter of just cleaning on, clicking on the back button. Yeah, you just click on the back button then it will bring you to the original page to bring you to the original page. So that's everywhere that you need to go if you need to find information. So now we've talked specifically about the UK, how to find the sponsors, the companies who are the sponsors. And this is the list of the companies who are the sponsors in the UK. That is their website. So once you've checked that you are on the shortage occupation list, then you need to go to this company. If you are in looking for jobs in the UK, then you need to go to this website, uktsponsors.co.uk and these are a list of the companies, their names, their website, their social media platforms or their links and uh, where they are based, the job that they are into or the sector that they work in, their ratings and also when they were added onto the list, the register, because sometimes they can be removed from the list in case they've been involved in something that is not very good. 
and uh new ones uh what you call it are added onto it on a day-to-day -day basis as and when it happens so go and check the shortage occupation list if you are on there then but if you are list is not on there that is for the uk only if your list is not on there or your job is not on there then you need to find somebody else maybe your brother or your sister or your partner uh what you call it your colleague at work who probably is interested in doing it and they meet the requirements then they can apply and obviously then on your uh they can apply as the main applicant and they can attach you as uh what you call it as their spouse yeah as their spouse then obviously that may be something that might work with the same thing with the student visa as well if you can apply maybe your education is not the higher and you cannot apply as is for the masters and all of that then somebody else can apply then obviously you can get attached to them as they're dependent and all of that then you can do that on that particular basis or we earlier on we talked about the unskilled work uh, labor routes then you can do that to work on the poultry on the farms and the horticulture and all of that then also the manufacturing sector for the seasonal work and uh if you are looking for anything else any in other countries not just in the uk then that is the website for you that we looked earlier on is scholarshipscanada.info scholarshipscanada.info that is that website that is that website for you i hope uh yeah you've all gotten uh what you call it a bit more understanding of uh what we've talked about today so now what I'm going to do is just going to spin my camera around. Yeah, so if you've got any questions, if you've got any questions or you want to have a chit chat, you want to talk about anything, then send your request. If you want to have a chit chat, you want us to talk, yeah, send your request and let's talk. Let's have a, a discussion. Let's have a chat. If we send your request, I will bring you up on here. Then, yeah, we can, you can ask your questions. Uh, please, if it's something that we've already discussed, yeah, all I, I would just say is just go to the website and just go and refer to the website instead of just repeating everything over and over again. Otherwise, it's just going to be very, very monotonous or boring. Okay. If you want to have a chit-chat, just send your request please if you come on and there's any background noise please put yourself on mute for us put yeah, yourself hello, on dog. For us. put yourself yeah dog. For us. yeah hello yeah dog. hello good evening dog yeah yeah one person at a time please hello togbe togbe kelly yeah it's good evening dog yeah good evening togbe talk Let's talk. Yes, 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 please. Um, I wanted to ask um, my sister. Um, she's doing her yeah. national service. Um, she's doing um, natural resource. Okay. Can you hear me, please? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, she's doing. All right. She's doing natural resource. Um, she just finished uh, KNUSD. Yeah. Mm, can I, I don't know, can I, yeah, can she apply for a school there? Either you, you, um, um, Canada or UK? Yeah, she can apply if only she's got the money or she meets the requirements for the various scholarship programs. Yes. Oh, but has, right. has she finished, right. has she finished the uni that she's already attending? Yes, yeah, she's finished. She, she finishes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, if she, if she meets the requirements and uh yeah, she's got because if she doesn't get any scholarship, she doesn't apply for scholarship or she applies for scholarship and she doesn't get it. You should know that uh what you call it? Uh tuition fees are very expensive, especially in the UK. So, because I know a lot of stu students who are here who came as uh what you call it? Even today I spoke to two of them. They called me and they're saying that they arrived here and the school fees normally is between about 12,000 to 15,000 pound a year. And they've got a working visa. They've come here and they've realized that they cannot pay the fees. So most of them do not go to school. But if you do not go to school, which means that 
sometimes the schools will send uh what do you call it your information to the uk home office and they can have it on your record and it will affect you in the long run when your visa runs out and you're going to renew it or you're going to you get a sponsor and you are trying to switch it can affect you in the long run So um, yeah part of um, uh, another, I have one, she's in level 200. yeah Can she also... Uh... it it will be better if she's in level 200 it will be better that she finishes she completes her program otherwise when she comes here she will have to start all over again because if she comes in an undergraduate course is here it's four years and it's very expensive is it three years i think it's three years or so yeah i think it's three years and it's very expensive so Just imagine if you are paying twelve thousand pound times three, plus your feeding, your accommodation, or your hostel fees and all of that. Yeah, Kojo Richie. Yo, dog. Evening, evening. Yeah, hello. Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. I hope everything is cool. Yeah, by the grace of God. With, yeah, we thank God. Thank you for for the great work you have been doing. Thank you, because some Amen. of them, Amen. some of them don't, some of them don't know how to to do it. So you are trying. You are trying. You are making effort. You are making effort. And the the website. The website you were you were talking about is one of our friends, our colleague. He's called Yeah. <laughs> oh, for okay. the people. Yeah, he's called He's for called the what? people. So for the people, for the people. So you can Okay. go and search for him on TikTok. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. He's he's also trying. He's also trying. It, 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 is that his website? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the people. When you go on TikTok, type for the people. Yeah. Okay. Did he put Yeah, all you of will that see. together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gives all the sites over there. So when you go, when you go to his life, he has been teaching like Yeah. the way you have been teaching here. So he will Oh, give you okay. more informations, more informations. Okay. Yeah, and I Okay. hope Yeah. Uh, No one, problem. one, one problem that I've noticed that I, I see under the comment section that people are requesting for track driving, something, something over there. Track driving. They need the track driving. Mm -hmm. I want to request one of a site for you. It's called Visa Solution. Visa Visa, solution. Visa. Okay. Yeah, you can check. You can check right now. Visa Solution. Okay. Yeah. That's in UK, in uh, Tezax. Tezax. In where? In, in US, US, Tezax. In, exactly. I was going to say we have it. We don't have Texas in the UK. No, no, US, <laughs> US, US. US. Okay. Yeah, Visa Tezax, solutions. Visa Solution. Yeah, Visa Okay. Solution. Okay. Okay. No problem. No problem. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much for passing through. Okay, okay, okay. I wish you, I wish you the Okay. best. Okay. You too. Take care. <clears throat> Hello, Dr. Lawrence. Okay, next is next is nine. Yes, uh, I want to ask a question. Okay, Uh, go it's ahead. about uh, it's possible to to transition like between uh, education between I'm, I'm uh, right now I'm in Kenya and I'm Yeah. doing a course in in medicine, in medicine and and bachelor of medicine and surgery. Mission And I'm in my third year, third year in in the in the in the in medicine. Is it possible to apply for a school and you know like carry forward all those years and join like from fourth year in, in, in maybe UK or Canada and continue with my education? I don't know about that. You cannot carry forward your education from outside. I don't know whether they do that. I've never heard anything of that sort before, but it's better you complete your education wherever you are before you come over here and get your certificate and you can apply for ad advanced uh, qualifications. Okay, uh, Francis Emmanuel. Francis Emmanuel. Francis Emmanuel. Francis, can you talk? Okay, guys, it looks like everybody is dropping off. So, yeah, I will probably end it here. I will probably end the live over here. It looks like not a lot of people are coming on and the website keeps dropping. So, yeah, uh, thanks very much for all those who joined and all those who have passed through. And I hope that, obviously, the information that you've gotten here is going to... 
uh, what you call it, is going to help you to be able to go ahead and research. And as people have said, uh, obviously, the website is well put together. Uh, whoever did it, and uh, yeah, somebody says it's uh, for the people. If it is him, then obviously, he's done a very good job because it's a very good reference point, a very good reference material. And it's going to help a lot of people who wants to go there and obviously find the information. Okay, yeah. let me see. I think let me try and answer a few questions in the comment section before I probably go off. We've got not a lot of people. Now, see, now that I said <laughs> people are not coming on, now a lot of people are sending their comment. A lot of people are sending their request to join. Ricky says, hello, doctor. I expressed interest for Australia visa, but I was told to look for skilled assessment. How? I don't know what you mean. Yeah. I don't know what you mean by that. You're told to look for skilled assessment. What do you mean by skilled assessment? Okay, Melissa, thank you too. God bless you. God bless you too. Okay. Uh, I'm just joining. Yeah, you are late. You've been doing this for over three hours. Let's see now. A lot of people have come on as well. I was going to sign off and now a lot of people have sent their requests. Just as I was about signing off. Okay, hello, Derek. Hello, Dr. Lawrence. How are you? Yeah, hello, bro. I'm good. Go ahead, please. Uh, I quickly want to ask, um, with all these uh, applications, if one is skilled but uh, doesn't have lucrative uh, CV, is it possible a lot of works are going to like look through and maybe apply or help the person? No, uh, if you you joined very late because earlier on when I started, I started with writing a, a CV, a winning CV. That's what I started with. <laughs> so, oh, so you joined you. Because, and so you joined. Another question too is normally. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry to catch you, but other question is, uh, if someone is based in like let's say for me for instance, I'm in South Africa, a Ghanaian yeah. though, in South Africa. Yeah trying my possible best to maybe get employed maybe with this unemployed or skilled work in mm -hmm. any other country but finding it difficult to i don't know whether it's 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 the the, the cv or any other thing is it possible it can, it can it can be it can be a, a bit of all of the above because it can be your cv you're not writing your cv well or probably your experience that you've got, uh, what you call it, you are not putting together, you're carrying across. Because let's say you are uh, an electrical engineer and you have relocated, it's just an example, you've an uh, electrical engineer and you've relocated to South Africa, but the job that you are doing currently, it's, not, it's got nothing to do with electrical engineering. It means that you haven't gotten the relevant experience to be able to back your degree or your qualification. You understand? So in that case, if you put together a CV or you put yeah. together and you haven't gotten any experience or you cannot get any references to be able to back or support your application, then obviously, uh, what do you call it? It might not be able to move forward. You understand? So your experiences, your skills, and especially in the UK, that's what most employers are looking for. They are interested in their skills and your experiences more than just their qualifications. If you've got the qualifications, it's good. But the qualifications alone does not mean that you can do the job. It's the experience and the skills that demonstrates that you can do the job. And that's what you need to be able to show the employer in your CV. You understand? Yeah, so it's unfortunate that you joined very late. Maybe if you go to my YouTube website, Dr. Laurie Samoa, yeah, and you subscribe to it, I'm going to be uploading the entire video, the live that I did earlier today and that is going to i started with the cv writing how to write a winning cv all right and you will and be able can to you recommend uh any other place to edit yeah if you want a recommendation go to read.co.uk read r-e-e-d.co.uk -e 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 they've got very good templates for cv but please when you go there make sure that you are not copying it uh dito dito yeah uh, somebody's asking, what's your YouTube? Uh, I just said it's, it's Dr. Lauren Samoa. It's the same name I use over here. Dr. Lauren Samoa is the same name. So just use my name, enter it, and it will, my YouTube channel will come up. Yeah? The YouTube channel in the belly is Dr. Lauren Samoa. Okay, Seydou. Seydou Kasim. 
Hello, Seydu. I think Seydu is frozen out. Okay, guys, thanks very much for your help. Thanks very much for your support. And uh, let me answer a few questions in the comment section. Uh... Uh, Mami Fua said, I'm on a student visa in the UK, but finding it difficult to get a job. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, yeah, normally I know that obviously that can be, uh, what you call it, very difficult and uh, uh, challenging because... If you are a student, you're normally allowed, is it 20, 20 hours? Yeah, that's how many hours uh, you are allowed. And it's very difficult to be able to find, uh, what do you call it? Uh, most employers, it's very difficult to be able to find employers who will be able to give you that. So uh, most of the time, you have to probably be working for maybe, maybe doing a restaurant job, maybe McDonald's, or maybe if you're within your school, They've got some, maybe a library over there, or they've got some cafeteria over there. They maybe look for some jobs, or maybe look for jobs with their supermarkets. Maybe going, stacking their shelves, and those are some of the jobs that might be able to suit you better. Or even if you do get a care job or something of that sort, that will be able to suit your requirements. But generally, yeah, most employers, the jobs that they've got on offer are normally for full-time people. So as a student, yeah, it can be very, very challenging, yeah, to be able to find a work for 20 hours and all of that, that can fit around your schedule, yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. Somebody said, yeah, let me subscribe myself. <laughs> I did, of course, healthcare, so what can I do? Yeah, I did, of course, healthcare, so what can I do? Healthcare giver, yeah, so if we're a healthcare giver, yeah, if you go to um, the UK government website, the one I showed earlier on, there are a lot, if we're already in the UK, there are a lot of care uh, jobs, care assistant job or healthcare assistant jobs on there that you can go and obviously search it. You can go and search for it. Somebody said, can D7 in maths? I don't know what a D7. I completed uh school ages ago so i don't know what the d7 means <laughs> whether it's a pass or not because in the uk for you to be able to apply you need to get at least grade a to c grade a to c in your science in your maths and in your english yeah for your secondary education so i don't know what the d7 means d7 in maths i don't know what it means and science yeah if it's a, that is equivalent to grade a to c then obviously that is okay. I need a working visa. How long does it take to get it? Go to the UK government website, Terex, www.gov.uk. I just explained it. So go to the website and go and read it. Yeah. Working visa, how long it takes. Uh, hello, doctor. I have a sister in UK and I want to join her. Any help, please? Yeah. Go, ask your sister to go and go to the UK government website and read about how they can help you. If they want to help you, how are they going to help you? Bring you here as a dependent, are you coming as a visitor? If you're a visitor, you cannot be able to stay here and work. So either you come as a dependent or uh, what you call it, you come here as a student. That is uh, one way that they will be able to help you to be able to come here. Okay, guys, uh, thanks very much. All those who passed through, all those who joined, uh, I'm exhausted now. I'm exhausted now. So I need to go and have some rest. So if you subscribe to my YouTube page, it's Dr. Lawrence Samoa, D.R. Lawrence Amoa. The same name I've got here. Look for my YouTube channel and I'm going to have loading this entire video. When I started earlier on, I talked about and I explained how to write a winning CV. How to write a winning CV. If you want your... You're applying for a skilled worker visa or you're already in the UK and you are looking to switch or apply for a job. You are job hunting and all of that. And your CVs keep getting rejected. 
then obviously you want to subscribe to my youtube channel when i upload this video then you'll be able to watch everything from the beginning then you can fully know and understand how to write a winning cv because most employers what they do is they spend between 15 to 20 or even 30 seconds scanning your cv because you can imagine if they probably received about hundreds and hundreds of cv for one particular job or vacancy they haven't got the time the hr or the recruiting manager hasn't got a lot of time to be able to read everything that you've put into your cv they're just going to scan through it and what they are looking at is they are looking at your personal statement your skills and your uh what you call it your personal statement and also your employer history that's what uh what you call it they are interested in to look at your experiences and your key skills before they can make and if they are what they are looking for is just some keywords if they are not finding those keywords they are not finding that information your personal statement is not punchy enough then obviously guess where your cv is going straight into the bin next to them so that's where when you are putting in any uh what you call it any cv just make sure that it's a winning one and so if you subscribe to my youtube channel one modernly upload the video then you will be able to start watching it and you can get yourself informed again the youtube channel is dr lauren samoa dr lauren samoa dr lauren samoa it's the same name on my uh, tiktok page over here dr lauren samoa look for me on my youtube uh, subscribe to it when i upload it then you'll be able to find it or when you go on there i've already uploaded loads and loads of videos that talks about application how to apply for a skilled worker visa when you click on the description section of the videos you will find loads of other links on there that you can click on there that takes you directly to the website of the various uh what you call it job sites and you can decide look for a research and uh if you meet any of those requirements then you can decide that you want to apply take care have a wonderful weekend and uh, i will see you when i see you take care god richard bless you bye for now